What? We're on video game. Go to the different channel. Oh yeah, that's right. We have to go to a fucking different thing. Not the streaming cha- Not the streaming chamber, Noir. No. Be in here. All right, there we go. Get fucking. I'm gonna drag Bone in here. Okay, there we go. All right, how's everybody doing tonight? Great. Yeah. Back down a little bit. Like every other person Hype here. for E3! Hello, naughty children. You ready for some murder? Oh, we're me. gonna we're gonna we're gonna look at some stuff today. Uh, we're gonna look at some more Mineko today. Oh well, yeah, I did Last change it so I did change it so it says question in the dark, right? On fucking Twitch. I swear to god I better have. Okay, go. Uh, it says did it say the lockdown the horny. Oh yeah, that's right, the fucking Cause you, cause, cause you people can't pay attention to visual, to sit to visual, to visual One of the mods? love. Yeah, I'll do it. Uh, we can preemptively do it. Horny brand is uh, is locked. I got one. <laughs> it clowns locked as well. Uh, yes, that entire subsection is locked. I got uh, one. All right, let me let me make the actual announcement one here, sec. just to be I'm safe. I'm gonna use the bathroom really quickly. Okay. I. Ooh. So now, uh, I think uh, this is going to be the session where we start, like, really, really getting into things a little bit. Yes, um, I have been listening back to the, the uploads on YouTube, but Jesus Christ, my voice sounds awful. Hmm. Oh, you're mm, fine. That is not- No! It's fine, it's fine. Yeah. So wait, you'll get used to it fast. Okay. I have to deal with my voice. Your voice sounds actually- you're, you're one of the- I would say you're one of the top-tier voice actors, Bone. Uh. Oh, I still, I, I still way, hate way. my voice, but I had to get used to it, and now I love my voice. Yeah, you gotta learn your voice. Yeah. Hated my voice. Right, I think, I think the one thing that I hate Press is it's so inconsistent. Ah, uh, you'll figure it out. AC yeah. Jarvis does not need to scan this guy's balls. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, uh, uh. Orange, you want a little? Uh, well, actually, first off, I think after the stream, I, I wanted to talk to you about like maybe establishing an upload schedule for Umaneko. Okay. Because like for for Higurashi, we were kind of just doing it like a little bit like every oh, day. Oh yeah, like which... I was just fucking like I'm just shoving these up here whenever I'm giving them pretty much. But uh, I feel like having like kind of an established schedule for when we upload like the sessions would, I guess, kind of help with viewership a bit. Yeah, true. Uh, do we want to just do it like? I mean, so how quickly do you think you can put these together? Because it's like, if we can just, like, if we can do a session and you can have the session ready by, like, the, the, the next day, we could do it so it's like, I put up one on Monday, I put up one on Wednesday, I put up one on Friday. Um, there are multiple variables. Okay, fair enough. Because uh, if, uh, if, I, if there isn't that many, like, uh, like, skits I can do, it doesn't really, like, it doesn't, it wouldn't really, like, be too hard, but, like, uh, just doing fun edits would be a little bit more difficult to get in the day. Also, like, fucking, I had, uh, on Wednesdays, I just become super unavailable because I have to watch my nephew. <laughs> oh, jeez. And today was a specifically bad because my car, my mom's car broke down and I had to watch him for, like, almost five hours. <laughs> Ouch! So what I guess what we could do is, um, we will get up a, like, we'll get, like, a decent store of videos ready to go. And then after that, we can kind of talk about, like, when we should be putting up these videos. Yeah. Oh, by the way, uh, here's a preview of the first thumbnail for the entire thing. It's not finished, but... Sure. It's a, it's a preview. Mm. It's uh, taking a long-ass time to upload. There we go. Know. All right, yeah, it's very good. It's it's Battler doing the funny little grabby boob thing. Is, uh, is Calm back, by the way? She said she needed to use her. I don't think so. Rest. Damn, she's really going. Alright. Well, now I have a fucking Blaze Blue song playing now. <laughs> Why nice! Which one? Uh, Which one? Uh, Awakening the Chaos 2 LA Vocals Edition. Wait, it, I don't have a song have, have 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 when uh, Guilty Gear was coming out. Because the song is bullshit blazing, but in my head it was like Blaze Blue blazing. But they're not the right game. Oh jeez! You don't is, have the, is Strive uh, actually out proper right the now? The Blaze Blue song. Yeah, uh, Stri Strive is gonna be out proper on Friday. Uh... Oh, but if you bought the digital deluxe version, you had it three days early. Yeah. Well, fuck me. I got digital deluxe because I'm confident that uh, 
Daisuke Ishimitar will deliver unto me five good DLC characters. Oh yeah, by the way, news from AC, he got Morrowind uh, online working. Oh cool, uh, we'll do that eventually. Basically, long story short is like, uh, I got to where I can open a server and all you guys have to do is find it on the server browser. <laughs> if it works properly. I've only tested it with myself joining. I, I think, uh, I think what me and AC will me do your tonight credit card after number, the, I think your after, expiration date, and those three wacky numbers on the back. I think after me, uh, after we're done with the session, I might actually test it out with him, to see if it works. I might try that out. Hmm. I've never done Marwin. I've never done Marwin either, and I and now I can have people read me the dialogue so I don't have to read myself. Mm -hmm. Yay. Yeah, which, by the way, I was reading uh, Umineko Saku. Cannot discuss any of the shit that I read, but uh, it, it's can. pretty fascinating you reading. Yeah, you can just, in the other. Yeah, just, just talk thread, about it yeah. in the Fighting Club. By the way, you too, viewer at home, can talk in the Fighting Club if you know what's up. And mm -hmm. you just have to join if our fucking know server. Truth. And you give us those three little... No, no don't actually. <laughs> <laughs> Please, don't try to convince people to give, them, to give us their credit card numbers. But I think someone actually got banned for doing that, I think. <laughs> okay, you know what? Distinctly, don't give us your, your credit card All the more reason. We will report you to the authorities. I can't what believe the there's so many... I can't believe there's so many uh, artists I don't like that model. I don't, I don't want to look at that. It looks like the, uh, the, the, the grotesque Steve. Oh yeah, the fucking dream shit. Uh... Also, yeah, I saw that I saw that post uh, earlier, B. That was very good. <laughs> I, I would say it out that loud, but like I cannot because of reasons. Oh, right, Ninja Gaiden's out. I might get that. Uh, I heard some real whack ass shit with its a uh, uh, full screen option. Mm -hmm. Are we Did you fucking song of that fucking remix and what do you mean that what do you mean that Taco Bell is implemented a battle pass? Wait, what? <laughs> from uh from June seventh to July twelfth, Taco Bell is offering free Two Baja people into the Taco Bell to one free Baja <laughs> to offering free Baja Blast for completing challenges on the app. We've got a list of these challenges and their dates. They are purchasing any combo, ordering during happy hour, purchasing a drinks party pack, choose a freezy as your drink in your build your own cravings box, purchase any $2 combo, purchase a $5 ground day nachos box. What? what? Why is there a living moss discord? <laughs> <laughs> what, what the fuck is a living moss? Is, the, I guess it's the Taco Bell discord? Oh, did you hear about how, uh, for Pride Month, uh, Warner Ooh. Brothers had it so you can beat up a queer character in yeah, Injustice? Yeah, you can beat up Poison Ivy oh, the in the Injustice game. mobile game. Yeah, you get uh, something if you beat her up so enough good. times. Wouldn't it be that you beat up a racist or a homophobic person in that oh, game? Happy I don't think they'll add a racist so. or a homophobic character to Injustice. There's literally characters in that game. Happy Pride Month, beat up There's a queer character. Oh. No, no, beat up the, beat up the gay. <laughs> Do it. That's another way around. Beat the gay for Pride Month. Beat it out of injustice. <laughs> oh my god! I wasn't ready for this. So the stream hey, hasn't what? started yet, has it? Oh, is it the thing that fucking... Yeah, that, uh, oh, that. Oh my god. Khan's my dog like, doing stuff with her mom at the moment. I don't know. What? what? Oh god. Oh. I think I heard the Kaneko was getting into grab on. No. Shashi, what are you yelling about? Oh, what now? Uh, uh, grab on. That thing, that thing in uh, in Rakenjima Fight Club at the moment. Thing, the 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 Among Us thing. The drip. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, I got a question. Let that be the new that. thing. Let that be the new thing. About that, real quick. I was just gonna turn into like a grab on these nuts kind of joke. Uh. Hey, have you heard of that new dragon game coming out? Dragon. Which one? Dragon D's nuts on your face! Uh, <laughs> uh, I got him. Oh, <laughs> oh man! Uh, uh, uh. 
There we go. Oh, I can't believe I possessed orange for like a, a couple seconds there. Oh jeez. Oh, we have to wait that uh, long. Fuck. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh no, Jeff Keighley. He uh he contracted uh Eatma. Oh, is it like Sagan? Yeah, it's similar to that. <laughs> God fucking damn it. <laughs> What the fuck was Where that? is Khan? Hey, <laughs> Lois. I dropped out of my destiny raid for this. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> you made the right decision. I was on Twitter and I saw someone post horny, and I was like, "Who's posting horny?" And then I realized the uh, it was actually an NSFW fucking uh, uh, fucking account I follow. <laughs> I'll be honest. I was expecting you to ch the the twist to just be that you posted it. No, I'm I'm reserved with my horny on uh, Twitter. In fact, I'm reserved on Twitter a lot because I don't really like to retweet that much besides Orange's uh, stuff. It's true. Such he's, as my, he's my certified simp. He's my SMP. Come on. Well, here in the meantime, I'm gonna get Umineko actually started up and good to go. I was wondering about that. Um, I was hoping to fill the silence with uh with various Memes. with various music, but unfortunately, uh, Khan's just taking the piss. Holy shit! I'd be doing something with her mom at the moment. Like, her parents might have grabbed. I don't know. There we go. And I will get the thing started up. And uh, you might want to keep the battler cube up just so, like, um, anybody watching this on recording can just skip ahead to when the nah, battler cube is up. Well, no, nah, that's okay, that's because, fun. like... Uh, we need to make them watch my edits. I'm pretty sure that, like, even if uh, we fucking post... Even if I post this on YouTube, I can edit it down so it doesn't include all this chat. Well, I meant the VOD. Yeah, I know, I can edit down the VOD. You can edit the VOD? I believe so. Slightly. Not, not, not like, to a super ultra level, but, like... Anyways, just, I'm just gonna let the opening one. run... Yeah, nice. We need some good music. Joshy, why did you why did you fucking write "fuck you" under my announcement stream thing? Because you called me a simp. <laughs> Listen, I'm not a simp. Although I'm gonna edit my my uh, fucking notifications you know, or not my notifications, my fucking bio to say I edit shit for at orange boy. <laughs> You know, it kind of fucks me up because I'm like 80% sure, um, Potemkin has a band on his arm that just says SMP on it. Like, Shin Megami Pensei? No, like the Dream SMP server. Oh. Uh, oh. Hey kids, I like don't, my... don't, don't fucking throw out your medication just because Dream tells you to, that's bad. In fact, don't throw away your, mo your medication unless a doctor tells you to. Don't pull a uh, Kenzo. Or even if, maybe if it's Nanjo. Don't yell He's molest. Not a great doctor. Don't yell molest me not, and then start cackling evilly, where no one can hear you. <laughs> uh, don't yell don't molest me not. Maybe. And throw out your medication. Oh, no. Maybe throw out your absent. Yeah, throw out all your absent. First of all, absents don't even hit like that. Like who the fuck? <laughs> Yeah, thank you. Bad, bad, like, but I threw away my absence. Thing. Where is my wife? I haven't seen her ever since. <laughs> Which wife? I haven't seen my wife ever since the absence went away. Yes, AC. I, I know you. You. You, <laughs> you saw me subscribe to Wayne Radio TV. I know. I wonder. I wonder Man, if I can like, down, hold on. Down Where's bad 4K that video. <laughs> Where's Khan? That fridge video. Uh, uh, she's you know, using exactly restroom and What's stuff. Uh, wait, 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 wait. What's up, B? Hey, everyone. I said they're fucking that fridge video. is funny as fuck. Oh, so yeah. Like, I understand. yeah. You want the truth? You want the fucking truth? There is no fridge! I fridge. lied! <laughs> Remember to stay hydrated. Man, I, I gotta wonder if there's any hentai manga of Kinzo y where he yells, Molest me no. not! I don't, there's I don't not. think there's any hentai manga <laughs> as he of Kinzo. Tries to, as he tries to fight yeah. off one of the servants or something. Can, can I, I be know. real with you? The, the amount of uh, NSFW uh, uh, Umineko shit is very low. 
We're yeah, not looking at North I can Beach. Imagine. I would look, 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 look. look. As part of the as part of the current initiative of uh, this entire what? thing uh, to get more people into Umineko, I need you all to go out there and make as much Umineko based porn as you possibly can. <laughs> I thought you were going to talk to go touch the grass. Literally, yes. Why? You know what? Okay, that, make based based okay you know what? No, 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 porn. that too. But also go do the porn. A, 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 a healthy combination of both, frankly. Yeah. Any character is free reign as long as they're not Maria. Yeah. Watch, watch fucking, watch fucking everyone just commission like several artists. All fucking. Yeah. Riri. There oh, we fun. go. Yeah. Sorry, all like. Oh, there we go. Hello. Why does that look so perfect as a creepy mask face? Dreams dance when they wake up. Because it is. Now, that being said, because it since is. Con is here, I think we're ready to start. Yeah, yes, we are. podcast time is over. All right, so hey, uh, for, for Josh's sake, um, everybody stay quiet for a second after I say this. Uh, cut here. Okay. Okay, there we go. All right. A news ticker piled up on top of the TV program we were watching. The disaster report told us how municipals all over were continually sending out rain, flood, and wave warnings. Of course, the harshly beating raindrops on the window were much more convincing. This rain's incredible. Still, when it's raining this hard, it feels like it's gonna stop soon. You wish. They said the typhoons are moving slow, so it could be like this all day tomorrow. And even a little weather'd be enough to stop the boats. It looks like we won't be able to head out on Sunday after all. I'm glad I was cautious and didn't make any appointments for Monday with the outside world. I guess that means... <laughs> it looks like we'll be skipping school on Monday. Living on an island's starting to look pretty good. Come to think of it. Jessica, you have to take a boat to school every day, right? What did you do with the boats or when the boats are closed down? You had to stay home when it rains and show up late when the wind's blowing? Like King Kamehameha? If the boats don't come, I stay late. Still, it's not as good as it sounds. You stay home. <laughs> you don't stay late. I mean, no, staying I would be late. Yeah, whatever. Most of the time I get ordered to do private study and they're super anal about checking it, so it's not like I can take it easy. During the rainy season, when the weather stays bad for a long time, you must be forced to miss a bunch of days in a row. Yep, that happens. But then every single day I'll get a call from my homeroom teacher sourly instructing me on what to study and what to turn in. If only there was a modern, different device that could hold a screen with a keyboard and give that to me instantly. And if only it had a camera mod modified right in the front of it so they can view our faces perfectly fine. What the fuck are you guys talking about? That's never gonna happen. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, she can't slack off as easily as you're thinking, Battler Gun. She has to follow the rules for people that travel to school by boat and get a good amount of studying done. It'd actually be easier to just go to school. In my own room, I get distracted and can't concentrate. Plus, being made to do nothing but workbooks for several days straight is really mentally stressful. When I'm ready for college, I really just want to go someplace with dorms and say goodbye and good rinse to this pain in the ass island. Huh. So, by the way, what do you do when the weather's good in the morning? Then it gets bad on your way home that the boats are closed. You spend the night at school? That actually happens a lot. So they have some lodgings there for people who can't get back to the island. So those, they only Simple have one. Bed. They only have one bed for you. Okay. <laughs> I stay over there. Sometimes when it gets really bad, I can't get back home for a few days at a time. If you look at it from an if you look at it from the perspective of those people who have to go to school every day on a train packed to over two hundred percent capacity. <laughs> it's easy to irresponsibly think that going to school on a boat seems pretty interesting and fun. <laughs> but it's actually a hard work in a lot of ways. Inconsiderate tourists say that kind of thing all the time. Ugh, had enough of island life. 
I want to finish high school quick and leave this island behind. It must have been a full boarding school you could have gone to. Like St. Lucia's. Why did you go and choose the school on Nijima? That's what I wanted from the very beginning! It's Mom. She's always going on about how I need to learn manners and discipline as the successor to the head. In the end, I got stuck with a high school close to home. Man, I hate this island. I just want to go live in a city. A city where it doesn't matter if rain or spears fall from the sky, because as long as you stick some casual clothes and sandals on, you can still get to a shop in less than five minutes. I feel that pain every day. <laughs> Hold out just a bit more. It's only a little longer before you graduate high school, right? I can't wait a little longer. Uh... Jessica stretched out and reclined on the sofa. Maybe because now was a bad time slot. There weren't any interesting programs on. Bless me. And we had nothing to do but languidly kill time until we were called for dinner. In the end, Maria had not returned to the cousin's room. She'd probably been brought back to the mansion by Auntie Rosa. That'd be pretty boring for Maria, all by herself while the adults are having a confusing conversation. We thought we might head over to the mansion to see her. But after all, this, there was this lousy weather. It wasn't that much time until dinner. So we stayed where we were. At that time, we heard the sound of a humble knock. Jessica answered. Hello! The preparations for dinner are complete. Please come to the mansion. When did the chair get pushed up to the door? <laughs> it was Cannon Coon's voice. You went to all the trouble of coming from the mansion in this range to call us over. Did he just <laughs> call us on the telephone? Oh well. Maybe some sometimes part of a servant's duty is to go against common sense. Just when I was getting hungry. <laughs> Let's go. George Anarchy turned off the television and stood up. <laughs> My stomach's been growling for ages. Main family dinners were always fancy at as hell. Every time. It didn't go to Sansei, it was calf steak or something. Oh, I can't wait. They get even more fabulous on the day of the family conference. Even I'm looking forward to it. Go! Let's go! As with the room, Cannon Coon bowed silently and respectfully. Alright, let's go. Is the rain nasty out there? Yes. Please take care not to get your garments wet. After seeing the three of us out, Cannon Coon peered into the empty room. Is uh, Marie someone with not with you? Nope. Isn't she with Auntie Rosa? Oh, fuck. Rosa, lying on a sofa in the empty parlor, had fallen asleep at some point. She was bearing a burden on her shoulders that the children could never even imagine. Therefore, when she let herself relax, that exhaustion quickly led her into the world of sleep. Realizing this, Genji brought a blanket over to her. Tried to spread it over her, her eyes snapped open as though she had received an electric shock. Uh. Oh, it's you, Genji's son. Thank you. When she realized the thing had, uh, had touched her, it was just a blanket, and that Genji had been c considerately giving it to her, she let a sigh of relief. Did I wake you? My sincere apologies. No, it's okay. I hadn't planned on sleeping in the first place. What time is it now? As for the time, can you check the pocket watch that he took out of his chest pocket? It is slightly after six o'clock. Rosa gave her head a little shake as she realized that. Even though it felt like she had slept for a long time, not much time had actually passed. Even though she didn't feel rested at all, all the drowsiness that wrapped around her felt very deep. Thank you. I'll be fine without the blanket. I mustn't sleep at such a strange time. My sense of time has been completely thrown off. The rain. 
Has finally come down, I see. Rosa finally realized the peaceful sound that had put her to sleep it was actually the rain that had started falling. The wind is blowing hard, too. Perhaps the typhoon is finally upon us? That is what... <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> good, good. That is what they are saying on television. The typhoon is moving slowly. They expect it to be like this all through tomorrow. I see. Ugh, that wonderful rose garden. That must have been my last chance to see it. From the window, what you could see of the rose garden was completely blurred by the wind and the rain. Maria. That's right. Where's Maria? I have not seen her. I would think she had returned to the guest house. Rosa knew her daughter's nature well. The chill ran up her back. Maria was stupidly straightforward, to the point that stupidly could be repeated seven times. If she was ordered to find something that didn't exist, she would look forever and ever. Even if rain was pouring down. No. The cousins left earlier, so Maria was alone. Unless someone told her to stop, she would stay there, even if spit fell down from the sky. Without even opening an umbrella. Ah, uh, what have I done? Losing control of my emotion. As her mother, she had known about Maria's foolish straightforwardness better than anyone. Yet she had once again lost control of her emotions and done such a horrible thing. Maria! Maria! Rose pushed Genji away and ran down the hallway. If somebody makes a stupid shadow joke, I'm outie. He just did. Yeah, I did. What? Yeah, yeah. he literally he said, just he did. Says Marie, he says Maria! Like that. <laughs> Mother <laughs> He beat you to the punch. You should have seen, <laughs> oh. seen it coming. Problem. Look, my old fucking Xbox Live username was Demon Sonic 98 You didn't know these things about me. I'm very predictable. <laughs> <laughs> the outside really looked like a typhoon and was pouring down magnificently. Maybe because of some figure of th some figure of the terrain, the winds were not as strong as a typhoon, so an umbrella wouldn't be torn out of one's hand. Even so, it was enough to call it a storm. There's no time to admire the roses being soaked by the rain. Anyway, I'm getting pretty worried about Maria. You don't think she'll still be rebe she'll still she's still rebellious? You're searching for that rose alone, do you? I wonder. Surely not with this much rain. It's what I'd like to think, but Maria Chan is sometimes really stubborn and foolishly simple. We hadn't worried much thinking that Auntie Rosa had taken her back to the mansion. However, it was concerning that Canon Kuna thought that Maria was here when he came from the mansion to call us. I did not see her in the mansion, so I had assumed she, that she was here. Since Rosa Summer was taking a nap. You didn't see her on your way over here? My apologies. I opened my umbrella and. Um, I opened my umbrella and ran as fast as I could, so I did not pay much attention. If he had cut to the rose garden on the shortest line between the mansion and the guest house, then I would have missed the place Maria had been looking for her rose by a little. And it was raining hard, too. There's a good chance that Cannon Kuna failed it even to notice her. Not debating around here. It'd be faster if I just check it out directly. Anarchy, you up for a little race? So you think you can beat me now that you've had six years to grow? <laughs> Alright, let's find out. Let's go! Georgia, Anaki, and I flew out into the rain. Jessica and Cannon Coon followed behind us. Maria! You're there, answer me! Maria! It's Auntie Rosa! Auntie! Georgia, Anaki called back. Auntie Rosa flew at him in what, what almost amounted to a tackle. Where's Maria? Is she with you? No, we haven't seen Maria-chan since then. Ugh. 
Maria! Six oh. years ago, Maria had been three years old. She had been cu a cute and pure kid who would just accept it any whatever anyone said. But six years had passed since then. She was nine now and experiencing the good and bad parts of life that, that should have taught her something. And yet, she's still just as innocent and pure as she used to be. Maria! I circled the rosebed, something white unexpectedly turned to face me. It was a white umbrella. Maria, holding a white umbrella, was crouching, still searching for that rose. Her face, which turned bright red from her crying her eyes out, was dirty with water and mud. It was a truly painful sight to see. You idiot! Are you still looking? Oh. Can't find it. My rose. Can't find it. Oh. Oh, God. We have probably been here since the rain had started pouring down. Looked like her shoulders were freezing. She looked tired to the bone. But fortunately, since she was holding an umbrella, she wasn't completely soaked. Probably an umbrella from the handbag that Maria was always walking around with. Oh, thank goodness. Seriously, thank goodness. Mm hmm? Power cut. Uh, thank goodness you found her. Maria! I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. Auntie Rosa threw her an umbrella away and hugged Maria. Uh, it's not here. My world isn't here. Uh. Mama will look for it with you later. Uh, okay. I'll just let it go for today. Okay. Uh. Let it go for today. Look at Maria was still wasn't able to accept it, but she no longer had enough energy left to resist. Jessica and Cannon Coon caught up with caught up with us. I'll have a towel ready in the mansion immediately. Maria, were you here the whole time? I'm sorry. I'm sorry for being such a bad mother. Auntie Rosa. Why don't we head back to the mansion for the time being? Maria Chan will catch a cold like this. You're right. Maria, let's go. If we don't get you cleaned up, Grandfather will get mad at you. Ugh. I'm hungry. It's already time to eat. You did a good job searching. Once the weather gets better, we'll all go search together. We couldn't stay in the rain forever. We took Maria with us as we headed back to the mansion. Maria apparently wasn't as weak as I had thought. I still remember that dinner was calf steak. We started chanting, I'm hungry, hungry, ooh, and turned to her usual healthy self. Auntie Rosa didn't chide Maria on her ooh oohs. So that's it. You had an umbrella. You sure are good at packing the right stuff. Oh. I didn't bring an umbrella. Ugh. What? How'd you get that white umbrella you're holding? Oh. Borrowed it. it. Seemed that some caring person had brought her an umbrella. The normal girl would look for shelter when it started raining. There's no way Maria's stubbornness would be broken by something like that. Maybe that person gave up recommending that she find shelter. This brought an umbrella for her. Really? I will have to thank them. Who was it? Ah! Uh, Beatrice! The name that Maria mentioned very happily was that of the island's witch. Rosa took a deep breath and asked again, trying to avoid hurting Maria's feelings, now that she was happy. Really? That's nice. So, who was it? The person who brought you that umbrella. <laughs> oh. Be- Being a oh. Maria, who 
quickly picked up that her mother didn't believe her, made angry feints once again. <coughs> the Rosa started pursuing the subject. But it would be faster to ask the person who had lent Maria the umbrella during dinner rather than ask Maria herself. Because we don't want another round of child abuse. <laughs> oh. I'm glad you didn't catch a cold, Maria, but now you're gonna catch these hands if you don't tell me who got the umbrella for you. <laughs> 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 ooh, that was some nasty. Anyways, uh, Kraus. Did you say ooh? <laughs> Father, please at least join us for dinner. It won't be a family conference like this. Along with the dull pounding on that door, the sound of Kraus's entreaty could be heard. However, that voice seemed to harbor a sense of, resigna sense of resigna resignation. That its sound would not reach his intended ears. Enzo son, won't you at least go out for dinner? Haven't all of your children gathered here to see your face? Silence, Nonjo! So the bishop won't work. One move short. Apparently, Kinzo is completely focused on the final battle of his long lasting chess match with Nonjo. His brow wrinkled. He continued to glare at the game board through his spectacles. Krauss's voice didn't reach his ears. Kinzo son. I'm also hungry. Won't you go down and eat? In that case, you can go by yourself. Let me consider this next move for a little longer. We are going to finish it. Tonight. Otherwise. It looks like this match will never be- never an eternity be settled. Nando stood from his seat, hoping this would prompt Kinzo to do the same. But Kinzo's eyes never left the chessboard. He knew well that Kinzo always displayed a blind concentration when it came to chess. But he had never seen Kin Kinzo as focused as he was right now. He was acting almost as though, just as he had said, if the game wasn't finished tonight, there would never be another chance for them to continue their contest. Further attempts to persistently call him would surely not reach his heart. Nadra gave up and headed to the door that Kraus was still banging on. The door to the study opened. Kraus took a step back. Surely Kinzo hadn't actually come out. But it was Nadra who stood at the door. Kraus breathed a sigh of relief. No. Dr. Nanjo. Is father... I'm sorry, I couldn't- I couldn't be of service. Kinzo san's world is nothing but a, this room now. Nando shook his head with a completely defeated expression. Kraus raised his fist once more and banged on the door, shouting. Father, can you hear me? We're heading down now, but any time you feel like it, please join us. All of your children are waiting for you. The voice was very loud, and the doctor was being noise. The door was being noisily pounded on. There was no way that it wouldn't reach Kinzo's ears. It was reaching him. However, he was ignoring it anyway. However, at the time he was being called down for lunch, he did not get into a rage. Kinzo was now simply calm at heart. It's almost like as though he had attained peace by turning himself over to fate. I am not interested in dinner, nor my son's faces. I will only leave here when Beatrice is resurrected, and when I am chosen as a sacrifice for the key. The demon's roulette has already started spinning. Which, what meaning does dinner have at this point? The painfully loud banging on the door had completely fa failed to enter his hearing. Kinzo, when I say of total peace, suddenly thought about his next chess move. Just as, just as always, Kinzo was the only one missing from the dining hall. Kraus, wearing a bitter smile, returned with Nanjo. Just as always, Father isn't feeling well. He truly regrets missing this once-a-year opportunity to sit together with his gathered relatives. Ugh. Ava and Rudolph snickered. 
Mm. Think about Kinzo's character, he didn't regret it at all. And none of his relatives regretted that he hadn't appeared either. Then why don't we start dinner? Go to get it started. Certainly! Well then, ladies and gentlemen, we shall begin. Upon finally being told to begin the family conference dinner, his highlight scene for the whole year, Gota nodded, grinning broadly. Um, I was wondering, who was it that lent Maria an umbrella? When Rosa timidly cut through the sounds of the dining hall, everyone there turned their attention to her at once. Umbrella? <coughs> What's this about? Um, <laughs> it started raining while Maria was in the Rose Garden a short while back. It seems she borrowed a white umbrella for someone, and I wanted to thank them. It wasn't one of us. After you went out, Rosa, we changed rooms and continued our friendly chat the whole rest of the time. Yeah, that's right. Even after that, us siblings kept on with our friendly chat. The word friendly fell awkwardly from Hideyoshi's lips, so that even those that hadn't been there realized that it hadn't been a pleasant conversation. At the very least, it certainly couldn't have been me, Ava, Rudolph, or even Hideyoshi-san or Kirie-san. We were together the whole time, even after Natsuhine-san and Rosa-san left. The whole time until the meal started. Nesan went up to study with Genji-san to call father. At that time, the rest of us went straight to the dining hall. So it wasn't one of us. For a consideration like lending an umbrella, wouldn't it be one of the servants? So, go to some? I have been in the kitchen the whole time preparing. My sincere apologies. Goda looks slightly disappointed about missing the chance to show off. At that time, Shannon and Kumasawa appeared, pushing a servant's cart loaded with hors d'oeuvres. Then perhaps it was Kumasawa or Shannon Champ? I'm sorry? Have I made some mistake? Shannon shrunk, mistakenly thinking that she was being accused of making some error, having come in part way. Boobs! Now you'll have Boob it. Out. Yeah? When Maria Chan was alone in the rose garden that stirred the rain, someone gave her an umbrella. Auntie Rosa said that she wanted to thank that person. Hmm. Beatrice. Maria, her mouth a thin line, to the witch's name in a small voice. Auntie Rosa explained the situation one more time. As she did, Kumasawa-san cackled. Oh, ha, ha, ha. It wasn't ours. Karen san and I were preparing the rooms together, so we did not go outside. Yes. I apologize for not being able to help. Preparing the rooms? What do you mean by that? Because of this rain, I thought that it would be difficult for all of the guests to return to the guest house. So I ordered the servants to prepare the guest rooms inside the mansion. <laughs> really? How thoughtful! <laughs> That's right, it would be rude to chase us outside in all this rain, wouldn't it? Can you give it a rest? Oh, not on your life. Yes. <clears throat> we received the orders from Madam. <laughs> and I, Kumasawa-san, and Kanukun were preparing the rooms. Then it became time for dinner, and since we had received an order from Genji-sama to go to the guest house and call the children, Kanukun left on our behalf. Jelly. 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 Oh. Mike's muted, Jelly. <laughs> ah, that's why. <laughs> uh, what's that like? What's yeah, that? What's that? So what's that noise? The boiler room. 
What? Are you, are you talking about me? No, like, Shelly oh, has, boy. like, it sounds like a fuck. it sounds like the fucking- It's by AC, man, it's It sounds like hot. the radio from Silent Hill. <laughs> Every time Kumasawa opens her mouth, she unleashes the boiler of demons. <laughs> I can turn it off if it's no, if no, it's a no, problem. No no no, 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 don't overheat yourself it's, it's for this. It's fine. It's fine. It's summer. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. Let me. Let me. Let me do this for real. Yes. In that case, did Kamen-san find Maria on the way to the guest house and hand her the umbrella? Ah. Not. Not. It. The person who actually received the umbrella denied it. Rosa was troubled. All she wanted to do was give a word of thanks to the person who had lent the umbrella, but she couldn't find them. And she, and she had thought she had thought that uh, asking like this with everyone gathered for dinner would work immediately. Then Natsuhi Nesan. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. After my friendly conversation with everyone, my headache was so bad, I, I have been resting in my room. Therefore, I did not go outside. Then, who? George Kuhn and the kids? That, that, that can't be right. No, it wasn't us. We were watching television in the guest house the whole time. Actually, we thought that Maria had gone back to the mansion with you. Cannon Coon came, and he asked whether Maria was with us. That was when he first realized that she wasn't in the mansion. In the first place. Uh, if it were if it were me, before lending her an umbrella, I'd have grabbed her hand and pulled her to under a roof. Rosa was completely baffled. One by one, the relatives and the servants were claiming that it wasn't them. Even though it really wasn't something anyone would need to hide. With that, the pro by process of elimination, the number of people it could have been wasn't large. Of course it wasn't me! Right after it began raining, I visited Kinzo-san's room, and have been playing chess with him just- uh, Sorry, I'm out of breath. Chess with him until just now. Which means that it also wasn't Grandfather. Wait a sec. Doesn't seem to get a bit weird. Who's left? Then, who? Genji-san? Huh? Uh, wait a second. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> it's not like I'm searching for some culprit or anything. All I want to do is, as a mother, thank that person who gave Maria an umbrella in the middle of the rain. Giving an umbrella to a girl loitering in the rain was something to be praised, not hidden. Despite that, no one raised their hand. Why? Everyone started whispering about how strange this had all gotten. One sec, I've got to use the bathroom again. Okay. Oh. Oh. Calm down, Rosa. Uh, not right now, we're waiting for Khan to get back. Yeah, Khan has to go use the restroom. Uh -huh. Are they just ignoring her because it's like, oh, she's just a stupid kid kind of thing? I mean, they're not going to yeah. believe in a witch. Yeah. I mean, like, and yeah, she, but she fair. said something and they just completely ignored her. Because they, As... they, they, because you know, it's kind of, it kind of imply that she believes pretty heavily in witches and stuff. And you know, also, like, else does. to be fair, do, do these also there's no parents... one else on the island. Mm -hmm. To to be fair to these guys, um, fucking, do these seem like the fucking type that would believe uh, not their kid? But they don't even say something like, don't be silly, Beatrice isn't real, or some shit. Yeah, then she's gonna throw a tantrum and they don't want to deal with that They're right like, now. They're like, I don't want to fucking deal with that, let's just ignore her for the time being. Uh. Also, this music is fucking banging. Yeah, dude. Uh, yeah. So, like, yeah. She's wondering, like, she's wondering probably what person on this island is calling themselves Beatrice. Hey, uh, do, you, do you guys want to know a little fun fact that I can share about the fighting game? Uh... Is that oh, most of its soundtrack is just lifted from the fucking visual novel? <laughs> I would have figured. I mean, that's not the there case for some like, visual novel fighting the games. Remix here. There are a few like remixes there, and but, like yeah. new introductions, but for the most part, it's all exactly just like stuff ripped straight from the fucking thing. That's how bang the soundtrack is. Mm -hmm. 
Shit fucks. Man, yeah, I wonder if. Uh, 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 Damn, that music can fuck. We haven't even gotten to the most banger, banger of all bangers. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, this is this is the tip of the iceberg, people. It's the tip of the Umaneko iceberg. This is just the ambiance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be good. Like you, you will know when I when like we found peak when I yelled banger alert. <laughs> Wouldn't it be better oh, just to let us be in uh, charge of the banger scare. alert? I'll be in charge of. Wouldn't the it be better alert. just to let us like feel it naturally? No. What do you mean? Oh, okay. Just I don't know. I, I felt like a banger, banger alert because it'll be funny. Oh, okay. I was just worried it might like hit ruin the mood a bit, but maybe not. I don't know. Uh... Nah. Nah. All right. I will say it's definitely a little, it's more memorable than uh, Higurashi's because it, on some points Higurashi does have uh, some good tracks, but a lot of it's kind of like, eh? Yeah, but when that good one they hits, it hits. They definitely sort of raised the bar for their uh, the sequel. Man, I remember listening to like Sadako's original theme, like from the very original original one, and boy, that's a bad song! <laughs> Now I want to hear it. It sounds like shit. Wait, what's wait? What was it? Nautico's original theme. No, no, this is me. Damn, bro, this song comes. What's it called, friend? The fuck you just say? I said I like the song. <laughs> oh. uh. I saw calling to my flash. Uh. Huh? Huh? Oh, hey, Ozzy. Uh, Ozzy's oh, hey. here. Ozzy's here now. Oh, hey, I think, Ozzy. I think uh, Khan's coming back. I'm hearing... I'm seeing her mic light up. <laughs> yes, SDB, this soundtrack does massive consensual sex. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> oh. hey, we're, we're, we're just uh, we're, uh, waiting for Khan to go take a bathroom break real quick. Can you guys hear something in the background of my mic, by the way? Yes. Really. Okay, I so don't know what it is, though. Yeah, someone's either doing dishes or, like, taking a shower. It kind of just sounds like ambient mic noise. No? Yeah. Hey, guys, that's that's coming from the fucking VN. No, we're not- no, I'm no, talking like, about- I have, I, I have, like, I have a, a sound coming from my mic, I think. Yeah, I'm here. It's, like, it's barely noticeable, though. Like, I wouldn't have noticed it without you mentioning it. Sweet, hopefully the music's I thought that was just out. the- that was just rain sound effects from the, uh... Well, you can sure turn not, down- Sure, you tell me that's not real? You can turn down the- I'm gonna the test something real quick. You can turn okay, down the- Okay, now I can't hear anything. Oh, no. Well, I mean, I Josh, he just- Josh, he just muted himself. Oh. Okay, can't confirm the audio mix, it's pretty good. Uh, I just wanted to check it. Dun, dun. Uh, also, when uh, Khan comes back, uh, can can you uh like, can we do a a, a cut back here? Yeah, sure. For when uh, Khan gets back. Mhm. Mm just to make it easier. We'll all just clap together. Uh. I, 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 ever since the, the, was it the massive desync on one of the Higurashi videos, there's like a, there, I've been like kinda have tempted to ask a Orange to do an, uh, audio sync, but I think that just might have been the way I downloaded the VOD that fucked up. If you want to, <gasps> I can have it so there's an isolated thing where it's me going, okay, cut, and then it ends with me going here, <laughs> and then we just resume right where I left off. Uh, Alright. Have like that weird like anime eye catch thing where it's like the two different. Do the right to do the equals three transition. <laughs> yeah. I don't even know what that is. The oof. That just and do, zombie. That just do skip uh, me the button, that up, and then have it explode. <laughs> oh, that's what it is. The fucking Ray William Johnson. Mm -hmm. Damn. God, that that hearing that name just aged me so fucking bad. <laughs> <laughs> What's happening for him? Oh, it's like cut it. God, why and like it just flashes this part? image on. <laughs> That's it. 
It looks like she's holding her. It looks like it waves. It looks like she's holding his arm and being like, like okay, old geezer. She's giving him tickles. <laughs> it's like she's giving him like, a brother and sister, bro. Yeah, she's tickling him like like siblings do. Dude, do, do, no, they don't. Well, uh. I should know. I'm a single child. God, now I'm a I'm a fucking I'm fucking oh, I'm imagining like game. I'm imagining like Rudolph just having the fucking ass that's like halfway up his back. <laughs> oh, 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 no. uh, I was gonna say, bro, uh, uh, siblings don't like tickle each other. What they do is uh, grab each other by the hair and start fucking punching their face in. I don't. I think that's a very unique. No, cut it there. I there's think, a, there's I think a, that's an okay, experience. Okay, that's, that's not how unique that to you, happens, Joshi. Joshi. No, no, they're tickling each other. Oh. Tickle oh, I, I have an idea. Sister, I poked her in the kidneys. Why, why the kidneys? Back? Sticks it was annoyed by good, it, but yeah. it was all for in good fun. And she did the exact same thing to me, poking me in the kidneys. What? We have fun. We're they stole each other's kidneys. Here. Yes, we are. We're doing words and wingdings. Can Stupid Guilty Gear Strive up? come out for me now? No. Please. I didn't know, I, I, I pre-ordered the wrong edition because I didn't want to spend too much money. I mean, yeah, but you're gonna get the season pass anyway, aren't you? No. Well, it depends. I, I'm still deciding whether or not I'll buy it on PC or not. <gasps> okay. Come on, are you trying to communicate to us from the other uh, side? It's just picking up background. Uh, probably, yeah, background noise. That's my it's guess. Just yeah, it's like she she has uh she doesn't use push to talk, so it's just picking up whatever. Is Khan having like ass troubles or something? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I'm not talking about each other's ass. I, I think I think I, I should probably cut that. You should probably not bring that up for the safety of your life. I was yeah, like, I was gonna with think with so. Problem. What the it's fuck happened? Funny. <laughs> it's not even that. What if she came back the second? Or and she back? heard you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, no. Yes! Wait, fuck. Oh my god. Oh no! We just, we just heard there. Orange's door just be- We just hear fucking Orange's door Alright, now we have open. to talk about Orange's dick problems. No, I also yes. have ass problems, technically. <laughs> yes, he does shit his own ass, doesn't he? Uh, uh, that being said, I don't want to talk about my ass problems currently. <laughs> I was gonna say, uh, pick me what- I was gonna say, I, I think I got the- Alright, let's we'll talk about them later at an appropriate talk. Exactly. Uh, yeah, Khan, your mic is like blinking green at random points. <laughs> Did she say something? Look at the Twitch chat. I think I made. Oh, wait, what? Huh? Uh... No, oh, God, we're just oh Jesus. Uh, try resetting your Discord. I'm sure it's fine. It's not that big a deal. She can't. It die. might be picking up, like, just bits of, like, like inaudible oh, wait, static. Is she is she not fucking dog. here here? No, she's not. What do you mean she's not here here? It says she's here. The mic is off, but I mean like, Con, turn your mic back on. Uh, are you actually there, Con? She's probably, she's probably on her phone. Uh, if you're on your phone, that makes sense. It's the it's the it's the Rick dance. Oh, she's in the bathroom. Uh, yeah. You know, I've watched the stream while on the in the bathroom at times. I'm in the bathroom. I'm taking a shower while muted. Oh, in the... That doesn't happen when I'm in the middle of reading a fucking line. Jesus Christ, this word. <laughs> Man, it's taking forever. Yes, it's we fine. know. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. People will we don't, we don't, the good we don't rush people when they're in the bathroom. I find that very annoying. Wait, what? We let people do their business. We don't fucking rush them. <laughs> do business. There have been so many times where I had to go take a fucking shit and people are like, hurry up, Josh, and I go, I wish I could go as fast as I fucking could, asshole. It's all good, it's all good. I um, just saying, it's just taking forever. I'm sorry I can't yeah, evacuate you're my at your ass. ass. Yeah, you're I'm sorry yelling I can't at your evacuate ass. my ass as fast as you want me to. You're yelling at your asshole, go faster, asshole. You're, you're gonna look at the Super Saiyan transformation and then you'll just go really quickly. I no, swear we're going Doesn't to that cause you damage, though? Doesn't that fuck you up? 
What? Shitting while going Super Saiyan? <laughs> no, while fucking. <laughs> that would be weird. Wouldn't it? Oh my god. Shitting while going Super Saiyan. Ah, uh, yes. Super uh, Saiyan shit! MS! Yeah, see, SDP agrees with me. Yes, forcing is bad for your health. See? <laughs> uh. This is another level! Oh, Number geez. one, piss. <laughs> Number seven. Can't talk right As now. I'm making towards piss on the laptop. It gets naked. Number Are fifteen. Still video? Come foot lettuce. And number one is of course number five. <laughs> number three is number, number seven. Four. Student watches porn and gets naked. The last thing you want in your Burger King Burger is somebody else's feet. As it turns out, that's exactly what you want. <laughs> number s number six, man urinates on fellow passengers. <laughs> so while we wait, I'll sh I should play the Umineko scene, uh, <laughs> same song on this guitar. Whoa! I can't believe we're gonna get copyright struck. Yeah, we super are. <laughs> I thought you we get copyright struck for uh, Bone just hitting his fucking guitar. <laughs> No! I can't believe uh, I can't believe Bone just played every song at once. What we need to do is just Free Bird all the Maneko songs. Yeah. Mhm. Mm See, if we play every song at once, nobody will be able to tell what's playing and uh, what they can copyright strike. Can you feel the sunshine? <laughs> Does it brighten up your day? I Ancient don't know the rest the of the lyrics. Oh wait, for one to does. fly away. <laughs> the fucking SpongeBob clip. God damn it. I'll scream loud enough to fix it. I don't feel like screaming. <laughs> Personally, I'm making piss. I'll make piss. You can see the DMCA coming to my house and about to fucking cut my fucking head off. God, you have to get. <laughs> We're gonna have to shave off like fucking thirty minutes from this stream. God damn it! It's fine. My man do be shooting the entirety of Texas. Guys, sorry. Yeah. Okay, oh, it's fine. fine. I think I have a stomachache. Oh, you good? Uh, All right. Huh? Don't worry. Don't some tummy trouble. I'll be fine. Don't worry about it. Also, also, I heard everything you guys said over when I was in the bathroom on my thing. You all should be ashamed of yourself. I know. I would feel ashamed if he didn't I hear blame Orange for this. I told you, bro. Because I do not believe. Because if I believe I talk uh, about someone, that Look. person should know. Yeah, Every single right. day we have this fucking chat where uh, Zaz gets closer to becoming Joker 2019. Let's just what go about to Joker look, 2021? Look, look, we can, look, we can reconcile, reconcile our differences by going to Searing Gas Pain Land. It's fine. Searing well, Gas a, Pain what? Land? Well, what about uh, Cheese Grater Land? We should probably get back to the visual novel. SAY THE LINE! <laughs> wait, what? Oh, no, no, wait, 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 hold on, before we do, before we I do. Would... Cut here, motherfucker, me no. in the future. I was trying to tell you guys. I unplugged my microphone and turned my mic off we, when I, before I went to the bathroom. We, we, we know. We're just we know. We're trying to get back to um, this. Let's go. It was Beatrice. Let's go. Noir? Yeah, you might have another I'm mic that Rosa. went off because, like, your mic. Let's your just mic go! Come on! Like, Cut, 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 Cut here! Right. Noir, go! Noir, go! Sorry. Don't worry about it, Calm, calm down, down, Rosa. Why don't we just ask the person who borrowed the umbrella? An idea that everyone would agree makes sense. No scratching their heads at why she didn't just ask Maria, who had been given the umbrella. However, Rosa bit her lower lip. As well, she already knew how Maria would answer if asked. Of course! Rudolph couldn't sky he has got it right! <coughs> Maria Chan, tell your uncle. Who lent you the umbrella? Beatrice! The drawing was wrapped in silence for an instant, but that soon broke and was wrapped in laughter. 
Really, though, I am very sorry about <laughs> that. Fine. Oh. It's alright, you can't control that. Yeah. I see Beatrice, the Witch of the Forest, felt pity and lent her an umbrella. What a nice story. <laughs> Rosa, there you go. What's a umbrella? Mm. <laughs> Rosa didn't seem satisfied. Oh shit, I clicked the wrong thing. She wanted to say thanks for, for the umbrella. Why did everyone have to be so clouded in smoke? Ah! Just like Uncle Carl said! Beatrice sent it to me! <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? Oh, innocent, such an enviable thing. Oh, what the fuck? I didn't even scroll up! Don't you all agree? Curse of Beatrice! She's coming back to haunt all of us! First it was my mic and now it's orange as computer! Ah! Yeah! Cross was laughing with a face Thank that was God. mocking her. Oh. And Maria, who apparently feeling that a claim was being believed, was overjoyed. What's going on? Don't tell me a witch really appeared and lent her an umbrella. This guy asked me in a small voice that, that wouldn't carry over to Maria, who was sitting across from me. Hey, Maria. Has Maria ever been the type to joke? If we had heard that kind of story pop out of the old bastard's mouth, we'd have just taken it as another joke. However, coming from Maria's mouth, it became somewhat inexplicable, strangely unsettling. No way. She's always been frank and serious. Hasn't she just always swallowed up jokes that were supposed to be obvious lies? I've never even heard of her cracking a joke. Auntie Rosa probably knew that better than anyone. It appeared that, because of this weird situation, she had no idea what was going on anymore. So, if Maria says that she borrowed an umbrella from Beatrice, th that definitely was Beatrice? We're talking about Maria here, so I can't imagine it was some kind of metaphor or a joke. It might be best to take what she says at face value. Then what's going on? That Genji-san or someone put on that fancy dress in the portrait and gave Maria the umbrella? That's an image I didn't mean to see. I have <laughs> no idea. Actually, that's what I want to know. Jessica shrugged jokingly, but her expression wasn't completely joking. Once the hors d'oeuvres were set out, set out and Goda shut off his vast store of knowledge, the meal began. A couple of casual, casual chats broke out here and there. It seemed how, somehow distant. It was a quiet dinner, earning no respite for the intrusive sound of rain that was creeping into the dining hall. Kumasawa and Shannon, pushing the serving carts, ran into Genji and Cannon on their way into the kitchen. Genji. Um, were you the one who lent Maria Sama an umbrella? Uh, umbrella? Huh? Thanks, Discord. Fucking dick! I was about to say, <laughs> a lot of people have been popping in and out on Discord. <laughs> For some reason, my Discord's having this issue where it's like, Hey, bitch, I'm gonna shut down and completely kick you out. That's my apologies. Um, yeah. I will try to have it fixed by next session. Hopefully it doesn't do it again. It's Beatrice. I, I fucking Beatrice wish. Beatrice is hunting Discord. <laughs> Beatrice was hunting Discord. The world could... would be a better place. <laughs> no, it's <laughs> funny because, like, Beatrice could just be haunting the CDs that this game was originally packaged on, but now she's moved on to Discord. <laughs> Yo! Oh, Beatrice has gone viral! I wish. It's like Ringu. Like... I wish. Dude. Let's keep going! Hey, when was the last time any of you installed shit? Not right, right now, let's CD. go. Not right now, let's go. Umbrella, what are you talking about? The fuck, let me read to that! No, wait, right. you're fine! That's fine. I heard that when it started raining, Maria Sama was alone in the Rose Garden. And it seems that she borrowed an umbrella from someone there. But we don't know who it was. It wasn't me. After all, I thought Maria Sama was in the guest house. When Battler Sama first found her, 
She was already holding a white umbrella. My apologies, but it was not me either. Then you don't think it was the Master, possibly? Everyone in both the dining hall and the place they were standing now had stated that it wasn't them. It meant that only Kinza was left. But... Sally? Sally. Um... That's my mic. There it is. <laughs> Sorry. Maybe he went walking down the corridor for some reason, when by coincidence he saw Maria-sama in the Rose Garden, but even an umbrella. The Master does not particularly like Maria-sama, as fucked up as that may sound. I agree. I can't imagine that. Just for Maria-sama? He would trouble himself to go all the way down the stairs to carry an umbrella directly to her? Oh my, how troublesome. That means that the one who lent Maria-sama an umbrella really was Beatrice-sama? Oh ho ho ho! Was that laugh? Give us how it laughed. The relatives in the dining hall had laughed it off. I couldn't think of any other way to break through the smoke availing this current situation. Just then, the crisp sound of a hands clapping twice rang through the hallway. I'll turn around at once to see that it was Gota, who was coming out of the dining hall. Chop chop, everyone! When serving a dinner, it's essential to make sure the dishes are served with the proper timing. Please immediately see to setting out the soup. Genji-san, the women are in the middle of an important job, so don't get in their way. I fucking hate you. <laughs> <laughs> Kenan said that internally at Gota for being rude to Genji, a person whose Kenan respected. Genji, realizing this, patted Kenan once in the shoulder as if to warn him. Kenan reluctantly turned away, and returned his expression to, to normal. Yeah. Obey Gota's orders. Let us now hurry to the preparation. <coughs> Let us now hurry to the preparation. Prepare! <coughs> Prepare the dining table! <coughs> Let us now hurry to prepare the dinner table. <laughs> Fucking... Come on! We have no time! Don't just dawdle around! Hurry! Your voice is like nails on a chalkboard, you fuck. I resent that! <laughs> go to grab the serving cart. That? Go to grab the serving cart from Shannon and drove it past her. How did the kitchen at a pace? Please allow us to return to the kitchen! What the f- After all, Godasan's patience is very short. <laughs> Please excuse me as well. Kumasawa and Shannon left the party. Only Genji and Genji and Kanan remained. Through the window, the darkness of the rainy night could be seen, along with the occasional thunderbolt. Genji-sama. Has Beatrice-sama really... returned? I don't know. Should we inform the Master? There is no need. If she ha has truly returned, she will eventually appear before the master of her own accord. Furthermore, she is a fickle person. It would be pointless to report. <clears throat> it would be pointless to report to the master only to find that she does not appear. I wonder if this means the master's ritual has already begun. Probably. However, that has nothing to do with furniture like us. We must return the favor that we receive from the Master until our final moments. Yes. As furniture, that is our duty. 
The thunder crashed once more. Except for that instant where the light lighting lit up the sky, all that could be seen out the window was the darkness of night. Just as humans rule when the sun is up, the time when the sun is down is ruled by those that are not human. The darkness of night now surrounding Rokenjima was ruled not by the Yashirmia family, but by another master. This master would take pity on Maria when she was alone and pummeled by the rain in the Rose Garden, and lend her an umbrella. Ken looked at the Rose Garden's lights, dim dimly visible beyond the window. The dim lights were not enough to illuminate the surrounding area. Looking at those lights felt like making eye contact with the witch, and Ken forcibly averted his gaze. If he didn't, it felt like his eyes would be absorbed by the night. Perhaps the weather was also a factor. You often hear stories about how things like atmospheric pressure can influence people's moods and physical health. For some time now, everyone was making periodic attempts to clear the gloomy atmosphere. By it, but any conversation quickly cut off, and the end, and in the end, the dining hall was simply buried by the sound of the rain. Dessert was some kind of chocolate cake accompanied by a pair of sorbet. Uh, Godasan enthusiastically explained the recipe as if delivering the coup de gras, but I quickly forgot the details. The guest of honor, grandfather, was absent. The weather was horrible, and the gipi person who had let Maria the umbrella was still a mystery. When dinner ended, no one even felt a one bit refreshed. It was too late now, but as painfully the taste wasn't the only important part of a meal, the whole atmosphere was also critical. Godasan, the supposed conductor of this performance, called dinner, did his best to enliven the event. Wrapping little jokes left and right, but it seemed like they didn't quite get there. They're taking orders for our after-dinner coffee, tea, and orange juice. He left the kitchen. As soon as he disappeared, Uncle Krauss spoke. My ma, how truly irksome that this dinner, which Goda worked so hard to create, has been so poorly received. Yes, seriously. <laughs> it feels like nothing would taste good today. It's just that kind of mood. Oh. I would love to hear why you feel that way. Sometime later, allow me as your older brother to help cheer you up. Auntie Eva grimaced mm. slightly. I heard that she was not on good terms with Uncle Crass, but now I could certainly feel it. I looked around and noticed that my dad and Auntie Rose were also grimacing. Anyhow, it looked like there was something besides the weather that was troubling all of them. Auntie Ava and my dad. They both looked like they were in a bad mood. Really? I don't think so. I asked Aunt Nazi, who was sitting on my right, but looked like she was also in a bad mood. She snapped back, as though she was absolutely not interested. Well, our donk conversation got a bit complicated. It's not something kids like you need to worry about, Batlakun. <laughs> right, Natsui-san. Kyrie-san. Uncle Hideyoshi laughed as he spoke but without his usual brightness. So I can vaguely imagine just how complicated their adult conversation had actually become. On top of that, even Aunt Nazi and Akiriye-san, the people that had directed his comment to, ignored him as though they hadn't heard anything. I don't know what kind of conversation they had been having while we were kids were away. It reminded me of how Dad had said that his stomach cramps, which, uh, when he, that he had stomach cramps when he arrived at the mansion. The family conference might have been a playful reunion to us kids, but it was definitely different for the adults. After Uncle Hideyoshi was ignored by the other adults, an awkward silence fell over the room. Kyrie-san spoke up. <clears throat> we were talking about how the kids' careers would turn out. What will you do in the future, Badler kun Just drift on to college? Would that be a little disheartening as a starting line for the long race of life? <laughs> hey, wait a sec. Kyrie, son, if you start talking about something like that in the middle of a meal, it won't digest well and we'll all get constipated, right? Ah, 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 ah. 
That's right, that's right, we were talking about Bat Lagoon and Jessica Chan's careers. You can't take your future too seriously. Ah, ah, ah. Hideyoshi heartily agreed, as if they really had been talking about that. But they probably hadn't. Curious on had obviously been trying to avoid t talking about something. However, if Curious on determined that this was the best course of action for now, then she was probably right. Taking this into account, I decided to cast aside my suspicions as to the cause behind Auntie Ava and Dad's bad moods. At long last, the serving cart returned, filled with tea and coffee. Kubasawa-san and Shannon-chan served everyone. Yoda-san then explained that, with this, tonight's dinner was over. If I had been able to eat in a more cheerful mood, it might have been the best dinner of my life. It seemed this greatest this this greatest of dinners couldn't have been couldn't have been had oh with the greatest. Oh my tradition. god! What? Oh, I cannot even see that. The Discord chat. Oh! Jesus Christ, can Jesus Christ, Joshy. Yeah. Oh. Well, it's been on stream. We've we've acknowledged its existence. Oh my god! No, no, okay, okay, okay. You know, it's bad enough that we have fucking it's see. better that we have fucking Oishi in the goddamn maid uniform, but now there's this. Or not maid uniform. I don't know which. I can't tell which image is more cursed. It's definitely the Oishi one. <laughs> yeah, this yeah. is not nearly as bad. I mean, he fucking works that dress. No, no, requires me not. to wear the dress Even properly. Even if he agrees, it looks crazy. The master his head is too big. His head too big for his goddamn feet. Bottom men oh. should not wear dresses. <laughs> yeah, they should. More power. So. For doing that. Yeah. Anyways. Oh. Do it to me, son. Is dinner over now? Over? Yeah. We're all done now. That's not ladylike. Stay in your seat and calmly drink up. Oh. I mean, it looked like she was she was really excited about the about the occasional about the occasionally crashing thunder. And she wanted to quickly finish eating and return out, run over to the window. They've been fidgeting for a while, waiting for the meal to end. And people are afraid of thunder. Well, others find it interesting, and Maria was apparently one of the latter. So when she heard from George on that dinner was over, a huge smile broke out across her face. Kid. She then she then stood from her seat, took out her handbag, which she had set under her seat. Never having left it, even when eating, even when she was eating, and began fishing around inside of it. No one seemed particularly concerned with this behavior. Wait, what's that? Where did you get? Where did you get it? George was the first to notice it. As he spoke, Battler also. Oh, Battler also noticed. When they looked, they noticed that Marie was now holding a beautiful Western-style envelope. In the front of the envelope, the Ashermia family crest, the one-winged eagle, was done in gold leaf. Furthermore, it was sealed with dark red, with dark red wax, imbuing a level of class upon it that made it clear that this is not something that Maria should be carrying around for fun. Maria John, what is that? It's in the Nazi he had also noticed the strangeness of the envelope that Maria was holding. Of the envelope, man. Because her voice sounded too serious to be admonishing a small child, the other relatives around her finally noticed. What's up, Natsuhine san? What is. that? Maria? Where did you pick that up? The Lopez, Pizzo sons! As Nandra muttered that, even as kids can understand why everyone seemed to be frozen solid. God damn it! <laughs> the envelope that Maria had held was one of the Ashermia family's heads custom made envelopes for private use. In other words, it could only mean one thing. The envelope contained a message from Kinzo. Oh. What's an envelope like that doing here? It. It looks like something interesting has jumped out at us. Just, just let me have a peek. Oh. No, I'm reading it. I was told to read it to everyone. Oh. 
Uncle yeah. Hideyoshi should have snatched the envelope out of Maria's hands, but she protected it as though hugging it, and didn't let it go. Hideyoshi Nissan, you shouldn't take something from a child by brute force. Maria chan, where did you get this envelope? Ah, got it from Beatrice when she gave me the umbrella. She told me to read it to everyone after the meal was over. I'm the witch's mess, mess, messenger. Ah. Messenger. <laughs> the witch, the aunt, she likes to mess around. Hmm. I'd rather try to joke about it, but no one, no one went along with him. I, I wonder what's written inside of it, Maria Chan. Maria casually opened up the envelope. It was sealed in with wax, so she just had, remo had, remo had to remove the, wa the sealing wax to open it up. <laughs> that sealing wax fell off onto the desk. Hideyoshi hastily picked it, picked it up and started, stared fixedly at it. He then sat in the center of the table, where Natsuhi, Kyrie, and Nanjo glared at it. He printed there was a sealing wax with a one-winged eagle on it, which is the Ashermia family crest, and also Kinzo's personal crest. This is the family's head's personal crest. I know, but wait, I know because I have received letters from Kinzo-san before. Without a doubt, this is Kinzo-san's wax, wax seal. But in this mansion, couldn't there be several identical seals? For example, if there was some kind of stamp for wax seals, couldn't someone other than Kinzo-san have sealed it? No, Kinzo-san would have used a ring on his finger. There's proof of the Ushiromiya family headship. When he sealed the wax. This shape and complex design is definitely Kinzo-san's seal. Oh, that isn't necessarily so. Anyone in the family must have received a letter from Dad at least once. We can't eliminate the possibility that someone using that wax as a model created a fake seal to pass themselves off as father. Hmm. I agree with Anarchy. No matter how the seal resembles Dad's, we can't prove that it's the real thing. Therefore, it doesn't prove that this envelope came from Dad. I feel the same way. I cannot approve of arbitrarily deciding that this is Father's letter only by the seal in the wax. Dr. Nanjo, would you mind refraining from speaking such vague words? I apologize. I said too much. One after another, all the siblings, from Kraus on downward, rejected Nanjo's statement. The envelope that Maria was holding had not necessarily been sent by Kinzo. They were afraid. Kinzo's intentions were written in there, and they feared from the bottoms of their hearts that there might be some decidedly unfavorable announcement regarding their inheritance. Maria? The person who gave you that envelope was the same person who lent you that umbrella. Right? Mm. I don't know what oo means. Is it true? Oo. Yep. Oo. So in other words, the witch Beatrice gave you that envelope along with the umbrella? Mm. Maria nodded forcefully. I... I agree with my husband. It's a dubious letter handed over by some suspicious person. It's not even worth reading. Oh, go on. What's the worst that could happen, right? Do not invoke Murphy's Law, Battler! Famous last words. What could possibly go wrong? 
No, 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 no. You gotta say, like, what could possibly go wrong? Mm. What could possibly go wrong? Anyways, we're gonna read the letter now. Bell said it to Jessica in a small voice and pretending to stir things up. But <laughs> Natsuhi, heard him, Natsuhi heard him clearly and glared at him with the threatening eyes. And then... Uh, Beatrice told you to read it after the meal was over. Right? Ooh. Ah. <laughs> Why not, everyone? This isn't Grandfather's envelope. It's Beatrice's. Who cares who wrote it? Why can't we just hear what's inside before passing judgment? Um, that's right. Even if Father didn't necessarily write it, I'm still concerned about its content. Maria-chan, I'm sorry I tried to take it away from you by force earlier. I apologize. So will you read it out loud in front of everyone? Maria? Read it. Oh. Dear pesky plumbers. <laughs> As all the relatives started to fe stared fiercely at Maria, she spread the letter open with a rustle. Do you really think it's Dad's letter? Impossible. Never father is not something to us in the past. If he didn't do it directly, you'd always send Genji son, right? I can't believe you would use such a joke like approach. That's right. <laughs> Maria, a messenger? That's seriously not his style. Rosa, this must be Maria-chan trying to surprise us with some hidden kind of talent, right? I... Maria is not a kid capable of something so clever. Don't say that about your daughter. Read it. Mm. The words came out of Maria's mouth, but for some reason were more... F for some reason it felt like her voice was, was different from usual. Everyone went suddenly silent. That's not what it's fucking called. It's called Fishy Aroma. <laughs> also, Bop Alert! Yeah, this is a banger. By the way, this is an orange's outro. Is it really called Fishy Aroma? The actual yes, translation yes. is Fishy Aroma. Yeah, Anyways, Ew. Like... Well, that one could also be interpreted as sexual. Anyways, go ahead and read. <clears throat> Welcome to Rokenjima, ladies and gentlemen of the Ushiromiya family. I am Beatrice, the alchemist for this family, under the employee of Kinzo-sama. How absurd! Quiet. I have served him for many years in accordance with our contract, but today, Kinzo-sama has announced the termination of that contract. Therefore, I ask that you acknowledge my resignation from the position of Family Alchemist as of today. How foolish. What, what nonsense. I... I can't stand to listen to it. And now, there is one part of the contract that I must explain to you all. I, Beatrice, lent Kinzo-sama a vast quantity of gold under certain terms. One of these terms specifies that all the gold is to be returned to me upon the termination of the contract. Furthermore, I am to receive everything of the Oshirumiya family as interest. Ridiculous! It's been ridiculous from the very beginning! You're only realizing that now? So it's basically one of those things, right? It's like one of those contracts with the devil you always hear about. And the contract has expired, so she's come to collect the interest. Trying to grab some retirement money for at her old age or something? Heh <laughs> what a cheeky witch. Balakun, now is not the time to joke around. Shut up. <laughs> My limited face has to, to ask, if I can't make fun of this, what can I make fun of? At the same time, <laughs> some of the adults' faces were, were pale, while I was looking completely shocked. 
After hearing this, you may feel as though Kinzo-sama has been savagely ruthless. Got the violin. <laughs> However, Kinzo-sama did appeal a special clause to the contract so that you would have a chance to preserve your wealth and honor. <clears throat> if and only if that special clause is fulfilled, I will lose my rights to the gold in the interest for all eternity. A special clause? W what is it? Special clause. Beatrice has the right to collect the gold and accumulate interest upon the termination of the contract. However, if someone is able to discover the hidden gold of this contract, Beatrice must abandon these rights for all time. The collection of the interest will proceed shortly, but if any one of you fulfills the terms of this special clause, I shall return everything, including the portion that has already been collected. Furthermore, as the first step in this collection of Kinzo Sama's debt, I have taken possession of the Ushiromiya family head's ring, which signifies the passage of the Ushiromiya family headship from one individual to another. I ask that you confirm this for yourselves by examining the imprint on the wax seal. You want me to accept this as real? The dad would relinquish his ring is unthinkable. I was staring at the ceiling wax as though he was trying to burn a hole through it. Even Rudolph were doing the same thing over his shoulder. I, I did have the old feeling that something was missing from Kinzo-san's finger when we were playing chess. Dr. Nanjo, don't say something so careless just because of a vague memory. We can't prove its authenticity here. The questions of whether Father really has handed over his ring and whether this letter tells the truth, we can determine simply by asking him directly. Th that's right. It's just as Kyrie-san says. Well now, I wonder... Will Kinzo-san answer you? After all, that person's thoughts are sometimes impossible to predict using common sense. In any event, this doesn't leave the realm of nonsense. In the first place, the fiction of the gold is itself a deception by father. If you want to talk about non-existent gold, leave me out of it. But, you heard what the witch is saying, right? About how the headship and all of the assets would be handed over to the one who finds the gold? <laughs> so, could this mean that Beatrice Sama's father's legal advisor or maybe in charge of his fund? We, we can't possibly trust the kind of strange person would entrust such a suspicious letter to a child. Anarchy, time for you to open up. Is it possible that someone you don't know is actually handling Dad's assets? No, that, that's impossible. As the agent to the head, I have total knowledge of all Father's assets. There shouldn't be anyone who can manipulate them without me knowing it. Hmm. Then there must be some assets that you do not have full knowledge of, mustn't there, Krausni-san? Absurd! There's no such thing! Oh, yes, there is. One assets of fathers that you know nothing about. <laughs> there is no way that something like that exists. No, it does. That'd be father's, no, Beatrice's hidden gold. Let's put things in order. In short, dad has some trusted confidant that not even Anarchy knows about. 
Furthermore, this person has always been in charge of watching and managing the gold. It's possible that this person is a dilettante of a very rich family who provided his financing in the first place through a mock devil's contract. Could it be that this confidant, this Beatrice son, is trying to test which of the sons and daughters is most fitting to be financed by her gold? We're curious if it was something that all of the siblings wanted to clarify. Upon reflection, they realized that during the time of Kinzo's strange epitaph had been displayed in the halls beneath the portrait of the witch. They had always whispered that one of the one who solved the puzzle would receive everything, yet no one had ever clearly stated it. Something that everyone had hoped might be true. Uh, that had, right here, right now, been clearly expressed by Beatrice's letter. It clearly specified that everything of the Ashermia family was to be given to the one who found the gold. Inzo-sama has already publicly displayed the location of the hidden gold within the epitaph under my portrait. The rules apply equally to all who can read the epitaph. If you discover the gold, I shall return everything to you. Tonight, I ask that you enjoy your battle of wits with Kinzo-sama to the fullest. I sincerely pray that this night will be both intellectual and elegant. Beatrice the Golden Father, I know you can hear me. Please respond. Dota Kinzo's study was being violently, violently beaten again, over and over again, like a percussion instrument. The screams coming from the other side were Krauss's, Rudolph's, and sometimes Ava's voices. It was the siblings who were trying to intrude upon Kinzo's study to question him about the truth behind that mysterious letter. Kinzo was eating. An elegant tablecloth was set out, set out over the desk, and the fabulous dinner that had, be, that had called the table down the dining hall was once again laid out. Kizzo continued to eat his meal in silence. Shannon, taking away an empty plate, looked uncomfortably between the door being beaten and on, on and Kinzo's face. Eh. Everyone is calling for you, but what would you like me to do? Leave it. God values silence, and so do I during dinner. Should I silence them? Mm -hmm. There is no need. It does not even reach my ears. Inzo coolly tasted his food. Kenji quietly lowered his head and took, out a, took a single step back. As he did, Cannon, who stood in reserve like a shadow behind and to the side of Genji, opened his mouth. Maria-sama seems to have received a letter from Beatrice-sama, so I assume they want to verify its authenticity. <laughs> that daredevil! She has started already! Come, Beatrice! There's nothing lacking in the coins that have been wagered. Shall we enjoy this night to the fullest? I have no intention of losing. Your smile is mine for all eternity! If I could see it one more time, I would regret losing my wealth, my honor, or even my life. Well then, the roulette has begun to spin. Which pocket will the ball fall into? Noir, rouge, or house takes all? Come, you may, be, you may begin. Beatrice, I'll show you the power of miracles once more. Last break now. There we go. Dab. How did you know? Oh wait, yeah, you read this before. <laughs> uh, shout out to Luck Gone Ricky. He makes fucking bops. Are we gonna keep on going? Yeah. Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah. Fuck it. yeah. We only got through uh, one chapter. Goddamn. Yeah. The strange light the long witch. Chapters. The strange light the witch had entrusted Maria with had wiped all memories of dinner from our minds. We had been repeatedly barraged with questions by Auntie Rosa and the other parents, and was now in the worst of tempers because no one would believe her. Even when we kissed her to talk to her, she would just ignore us. 
Our parents were all stirred up over the gold, firing back and forth about the distribution of the assets. And we forgetting that we children were even there. Even though I already figured out they had been talking about this in the shadows. I thought they'd actually be this, be, they'd be this blunt about it. At least to us kids, it was, it was, it was a considerable shock. But we could overhear, all of our parents want as much money as possible, and as soon as possible. Back and forth around grandfather's about grandfather's inheritance. Back and forth about the distribution of the gold as if it was found. About advance payments and cash. It was so despicable I couldn't bear to watch. Even though one of them was my dad. Look like Jessica felt the same way. We left our seats, although no one had asked us to leave, and we went to hang out somewhere apart from the parents. Yeah, I see. Now I really understand why Grandfather didn't want to show his face during meals. I'm so disillusioned with my parents right now! The money, the inheritance... How could they act like that right out in the open? Well, I'm already completely disillusioned with the old bastard. Wow. There's no way I could, I could think any worse of him. Hehehehe. <laughs> that was how you really feel. And you think I'm not? But even so, that freaking shocked me. Shocked me to the bottom of my heart. Jessica looked down at the floor, irritated. She was always talking about how bad her parents were. Maybe she hadn't really felt that way deep inside. I could really, I could realize that from the depths of Jessica's shock. You're both minors and still being brought up by your parents, so you might not understand. But getting money is neither a simple nor a pretty thing. You are still minors, so I won't try to force you to understand right now. But still, I'd like you to realize that your parents are just doing their best in their own way. Oh, great. George Anarchy's gotten all mature. I know that you're working hard as a full-fledged member of society and everything, but does that mean that when the conversation turns to money and assets and stuff, you're capable of turning into a shameless, greedy vulture like our dads? <laughs> oh, Jesus. If it would just be about me, then no, I wouldn't want to do that. Yeah, that's what I thought. However, when your family and your employees, your subordinates, and their families are all counting on you, there are some times where you must fight. I hate that kind of fight. <sighs> that back and forth about grandfather's inheritance, it just wanna, makes me want to puke. What? <sighs> Jessica pretended to spit violently. That harsh reaction made <laughs> the depths of her pain very clear. <laughs> Let's stop talking about this. All this about grandfather's hidden gold, about property and inheritance, is our parents' problem, not ours. I agree. At the very least, I think that's being considerate and staying out of the parents' way when they talk. When they are talking is the duty of their children. <laughs> Where's the fun in that? Everyone knows the phase adults are filthy. Word. But we had we had we had now seen that for ourselves, and that really did give us a shock. George Anarchy was now pretty much an adult, and I'd already been disillusioned with my dad in the first place, so the shock wasn't that big for us. But it looked like it was different different from Jessica. It looked as though it looked like the shock that Jessica received was even bigger than I had thought. This girl. I was talking badly about her parents, but it looked like she hadn't changed at all on the inside since long ago. Even now, she was still a pure-hearted pure and delicate person who couldn't doubt others. I'm sure she respected her parents as much as anyone else does. And then her parents started joining in with all the other parents right in front of the children. Going, money, money, inheritance, inheritance, my money! So no surprise the shock of hearing that was so big. Just a good job. Please don't start hating your mother and father. Start? <laughs> <laughs> I won't ask you to understand them, but, I'll, but at least don't hate them. I get it, just leave me alone a bit. Ugh. Six years ago, I would have further taunted the, 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 the dejected Jessica. But even I had grown up over the, over the past six years. 
Realized it would be better to leave Jessica as she was right now. Jessica suddenly looked away sulkingly and left the parlor. She probably wanted to be left alone right now. I did nothing but wordlessly watch her back as she left. Come to think of it, I wonder where Maria Chan went. She's probably still huddling up on the floor in front of the portrait. Maria, who truly, truly looked up to witches, expected that coming in direct con contact with Beatrice and receiving the letter as proof would be an event that would surprise everyone and make them happy. However, the adults had doubted, it, doubted its authenticity, had not taken Maria's story at face value, and thoroughly bombarded her with questions. Even I didn't find it hard to imagine how much that must, hurt, that must have hurt Maria. We couldn't speak to either Maria or Jessica. In the end, George, Anarchy, and I just abandoned ourselves to the sound of the falling rain on that dark night. I don't know what's happening with that typhoon. It sounds pretty wet to me, if I'm going to be honest. <laughs> True. Maybe there's some news. Have you looked outside a window recently? <laughs> <laughs> Man, that sounds like a, a small blonde girl crying and being abused outside there. He's like a brunette, isn't she? Is Jessica no, I'm getting about abused Sotico. now? Oh. I'm talking about Satoko. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> George Anakin walked over to the corner of the parlor where the television was. He hadn't called me over, and I couldn't really have cared less where the typhoon was on the scene now. So I didn't go over to the television, but instead I loaded her on the window. The wind hasn't picked up much here, but I wonder if it's horrible over the sea. I did hear from the weather report that there was a severe storm warning. Ah, curious, son. How's it going with you adults? Lots to talk about? Look if she caught the sarcasm. Kyrie san shrugged. That stomachache of a discussion could continue all night. It's very tiring. Well, all I can say is I hope you enjoy, you enjoy playing vultures to grandfather's property to your heart's content. It's disgusting. I'll agree with you on that. If I could just slip away like you, I would do it. Unfortunately, I can't. Even if I'm not allowed to speak. It's not easy being a partner, you know. You're your son's side. <laughs> Smiling bitterly. Well, yeah. Wait, didn't she just sneak away right now? Yeah. You probably won't let Kyrie-san, who's married into the family, speak. Still, as Dad's partner, she has no choice but to say, stay by his side and support him. <laughs> Being on the line of fire, she must be having having to bear for the greater mental, uh, far greater mental pressure than me. I wasn't going to apologize, but realizing that I had spoken too harshly, I got the sarcasm for the time being. So, how's it look? Still stuck on the topic of the mysterious witch, Beatrice? More or less. They've been piling up secret agreements for some time, hoping for some kind of agreement between the four of them on the distribution of Grandfather's inheritance after his death. That's a lot of words. And now some unknown fifth person has appeared to make things even more complicated, so there's no way that'll make for a peaceful conversation. Unfortunately... One moment they're snarling at each other, the next they'll set up a common front. Natsuhine san's not the only one getting headaches. On one end, they were all they all wanted a larger portion of the other siblings. They were all rivals. But on the other hand, they didn't want one yen to be snatched up by anyone other than the siblings, so they were all allies. I couldn't get her to tell me the details, but they were apparently arguing on and on about the ceasefire agreement and rules to prevent anyone from getting ahead. Situation under which their positions would be protected and what legal measures would be taken in, in the worst case scenario. By this point, my emotions had shot straight past disgust. I perceived them as a force to be reckoned with. So, basically, Beatrice is like a saboteur sent by grandfather. He probably wanted to scare the hell out of his children for just talking about the distribution of the inheritance without him. <laughs> who is this Beatrice, I wonder? If she is who she says she is, then she's a mystery that no one knew about until today. And she also knows about the existence of Grandfather's hidden gold. Furthermore, she was even entrusted with the head's ring. She must truly have been trusted by him. Well, obviously I don't think that she's a witch riding around on a broom. Hey! But she's really a person mysterious enough to be merit to, be to merit being called a witch. 
And I just hope Maria-chan will go more into detail about that. Even though she's just a little girl, everyone has been just chewing her up over this. They really scared her, and now we can't even ask her things she might have answered. <sighs> I wonder if those people have ever even read The North Wind and the Sun. What is for certain is that Marie received a letter from a person who took the name Beatrice. Just like Marie with a letter and hiding away even now, when she could have just appeared and talked to us directly. She sure is shy for a mystery person. <laughs> hey, Battler Cook. Do you think that someone called Beatrice actually exists? Eh, who knows. Probably just a false name, right? Like, she's grandfather's representative, so she was printed to take the name of the witch from his delusions. No, that's not what I meant. Right now, there are a total of 18 people here on Rokenjima. Do you think that there is a 19th person? Are there really a whole 18 people on this island? Wondering about that, I began counting on my fingers, and it really did come out to 18 people. Do I think it's the 19th person exists, you say? What exactly do you mean? Just what I said. It looks like the person who lent Maria that umbrella was not one of us 18. Therefore, it isn't reasonable to think that a 19th person exists and that this was the person who lent Maria the umbrella. Well, yeah, I suppose. Then where exactly is this person now? At the very least, she must have been on the island when it started raining. And since that time, the weather has become progressively worse, so taking a boat out would be pretty much impossible. In that case, that person must still be on the island hiding from the rain somewhere. And without being spotted by any of us. Certainly all of us have been randomly prowling around all over the mansion and the guesthouse. But no one has bumped into a 19th person. Even so, this island is huge. There be other places to hide from the rain outside the mansion and the guesthouse. At about this time, I began to realize what direction Kiryasan's doubt were taking us in. Kiryasan was denying the 19th, that a 19th person existed. Beatrice was one of, the, one of us 18. Another wish that, that someone we knew was using her name. If Beatrice really was as she described herself, this person would definitely be the most honored of guests. The most honored of confidants, trusted by Grandfather. There's no way the Grandfather wouldn't give that kind of person a warm reception. She would surely have been ushered into the mansion. However, we haven't seen anyone. Wait a second. Is that line of reasoning a little too hasty? Yeah, no one spotted them, but that doesn't mean you can't deny the possibility that a 19th person exists, right? Maybe, for some reason, they headed down to the island stealthily and have been uh, hiding ever since. What they call the Devil's Proof. Either prove that something exists, if this Beatrice appears in front of us all and says hi and that everything is resolved. That's impossible to prove that there is no 19th person. Yes. Battler Kun, your way of reasoning isn't bad. In the current situation, there's not enough information to either accept that a 19th person exists or deny it. But if you flip over the chessboard and think of it that way, we can be nearly sure that the existence of a 19th person is impossible. Flip over the ch- God damn it, they fucked up that too! <laughs> what was it supposed to be? Turn the chessboard around! I thought it was spinning the chessboard around. Spin the chessboard around. Yeah, they Flip fucked us the up, what the fuck? God damn it! <sighs> okay, so it's supposed to be spin the board around. It's supposed to be spin the ch- It's supposed to be spin the chessboard around. Wait, why can't we use the old translation? 
I, to, I like I swear to God, I thought I had the script in for uh, for seventh expansion. I'll have to figure I'll have to figure that out. Yeah. We'll, yeah, we'll you may want to take now. a look at that. Mm -hmm. All right, flip over the chest was one of Kiri. Now, whenever the mod for the rain was added in, mm -hmm. flipping over the chessboard was one of the one of Kiri-san's favorite then, phrases. I was influenced by those words and used them for myself from time to time. When I get stuck trying to find a move, find a move in chess or shogi, by flipping the chessboard over and looking at everything from your opponent's standpoint, you can often see a strategy that would that would give you the upper hand. Derived from this, it meant to think that by putting yourself in the opponent's shoes. Okay. Let's say that a 19th person called Beatrice actually exists. That person must have managed, without being seen by anyone, to stealthily arrive on this island and remain hidden since then. They had some reason for this, yes? In that case, why did they then deliberately appear before Maria and hand her the letter? really was a contradiction. If they had some reason for hiding themselves, they should have stayed hidden the whole time. They had appeared openly in front of Maria. Well, wait. Maria even said it. Didn't she say that she had been made a messenger? Because Maria was the youngest and looked the most innocent. Why would they need a messenger? If they just wanted a letter delivered to the family conference, they could have mailed it. If they mailed it to each of the four siblings, they would be unable to ignore it. There was no need for them to carry it themselves and secretly hand it over. That really... That really does sound pretty weird. In the first place, if Beatrice existed and she wanted to make her presence known to everyone, then she could have just openly presented herself to all of us. Despite that, she chose the vague method of appearing through a little girl called Maria-chan and only gave us an indistinct impression of who she was. Contradiction. Let's go a little deeper, shall we? She appeared in front of Maria, trying to give us the impression that a 19th person existed, and yet... She still hasn't appeared before us and is hiding somewhere at this very moment. The contradiction between these... Keep it in mind and flip over the chessboard. Should I just start saying spin the chessboard around instead? If you want to. Sure. Eh, I'll say that instead. Way better. In other words, the question is, why would a person want to give the impression that Beatrice exists as a 19th person? If this person wanted to hide, then they wouldn't have made their presence known. And if they wanted to show themselves, they wouldn't have used the roundabout approach of addressing someone with a letter. Which means... It's simple. Beatrice is one of the 18. Oh. Uh, here. Hold on a second. Everyone look away. I'm gonna go change settings real quick. Okay. Wait, what do you mean by look away? Uh, oh, there's, no. characters in the, there's characters in the menu. Uh, here. Yeah, right. yeah, Game language. Just... Hold on. Witch hunt! Go! All right, here. Restart it. Yeah, you know what? Here, we're gonna, so we're gonna do a little bit of a pro game remove real quick. So I'm gonna s what kind of pro gamer move? Uh, I'm going to save really quickly, uh, and then I'm gonna okay, double check in just to make sure. Is it set to witch hunt? No, it's not. All right. Uh, how the fuck do I actually like? Does it? Does it do I need to exit and reopen it? Yeah, true. Ooh. It's really hard to not look at the screen right now. Just okay. look away. I'm just not eyes. looking because I'm taking notes. Okay, so here, gonna save real quick, uh, and then we're just gonna go ahead and do a little pro gamer move, where I'm gonna turn off the game. I'm gonna turn it back on. I can't believe you didn't turn the uh, translation on. I, I didn't wondering. know that's how it worked. They don't actually explain to you how you turn, how you do the, how you do witch hunt translation stuff. Game file verification. Attention when you went to. You broke it. 
I broke it. No. What do you mean you want to? Uh, you want to use the superior translations? No, we're gonna break the game now. We gotta use our shitty one. This will take several minutes. Yeah, it has to. It doesn't actually. It doesn't actually take that long. Don't worry. How's everybody doing? Oh, I'm peachy. What do you mean, fail? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they won't let us use the witch hunt. Oh my okay, God. okay, never mind. It doesn't matter. It's fine. It's fine. We're good. We're good. What witch? So, class, what do you think? No, Are okay. there eighteen or nineteen people on the island? Hmm. Oh no! Is it gonna fucking? Oh Jesus Christ! We lose our progress. No, it's not that. Oh, for fuck's sake. What happened? So I think I know what's the deal. Um, uh, it... <sighs> Hold on a Is there a fucking way that I can just kind of like... Data caching is being performed. Is it just going to let me back in? Please. Please let me back in. <laughs> okay, good. All right. So it was, it was checking to verify the files. Um, it kept kind of like going, no, 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 you can't get back in. And I assume it was because I fucked with the legacy uh, opening shit because it didn't want me to. Uh, because I didn't want to fucking... What do you mean config trophy available now? Okay, good. Witch hunt stuff is on. Uh, can I go to the... Code? No! We lost it, didn't we? We fucking lost it! Alright, so, uh... We're gonna have some fun speeding through. Orange, did we actually lose the save? Yeah, all the save files are gone. Oh! Uh, uh, well, I mean, if you just unlock the next uh, chapter or whatever, the next episode. Uh, what that kind of fuck? Hold on. A yeah, second. it'll change the main menu, but just don't show the main menu. Then you can chapter select. Though for the first episode. Yeah. Uh, Wait, can't you, not just, looking... can't you just go through? All right, here you know what? I... Hit button. I mean, that would take forever. All right, uh, I'm gonna hold down control for a few minutes. Hold on a second. Ooh. Wait, wouldn't it be faster just to do like the episode, just unlock episode two, and then just get to like the scene? You have to. Uh, I thought was it unlock? You have to unlock all of them to do that, or is it just oh, you that episode? Thank you, Davros. Well, no, because I think if we if we do the unlock thing, it's also gonna unlock some other stuff that I don't want people to see yet. Because the devil looks. Uh, oh yeah, here, definitely don't fucking look right now. The so type transparent, no lip synchronization, uh, song subtitles, translation, whatever, it's fine. Exit. Oh, what the fucking- It doesn't save! Don't look. Don't look. And I love how I said, like, don't look, and I just hear the sound of no, someone like... entering the stream. Oh my god, I mean, it's, it's fucking- it's It doesn't- <laughs> It didn't behave when I changed the audio settings, so it's just- Alright, fine, whatever, here. Uh, okay, wait, hold on a second. Config. Oh, is it because the fucking seagull stuff is part of the background effects? That explains it. Okay. Alright, here. Okay. Back. Alright, your guys are good. Okay, for the record, I've muted it on the stream end, because I realized that would be a pain in the ass for everybody else to hear. So, unfortunately... Do they hear us? No, they can hear us. Yeah, we're fine. Uh. Alright, here. Come on. This pro this can't take too terribly long. Orange, it's gonna take a bit. All right, whatever. Yeah, I'd say, I'd say it would have it would have been faster just to get the yeah, the but scenes. it's good. Yeah, yeah but if we good. did that, we would have to. We could uh fucking. If there would I be, think uh, you could turn off the stream when we get to the like when we're about to exit. Or like, hey, that's it for tonight. You turn yeah, off the stream and forward. then you quit to the main menu while the streaming stuff. I didn't fucking think that uh. Oh my god, stop. <laughs> That's unskippable? Mm -hmm. uh, Alright, here, I'm just gonna stop. Oh my god. Are we done for today? <laughs> no, 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 no. So the reason why I did this is because it's showing the subtitles for the wrong opening. <laughs> oh, I was watching that. Why'd you stop that? Right? I was reading re that. Uh, we don't know about the opening lyrics. Because that's not for that song. I'm, I'm kidding. That's for the spoiler song. I swear. Oh, 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 gotcha, gotcha. Oh no, wait, no, it it is for the right one, but it's just gonna be off base because it's not the actual it's it's a different video that I had to use.
Yeah, fuck it. This, these are actually, this is correct, don't worry. It's not spoilery, is it? No, no this fine. one, this, we already watched this one. We as in the book club. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> I didn't think, I did not, I did not fucking think that it was gonna just go, it was gonna check and be like, Hey, motherfucker, you fucked up the openings, didn't you? <laughs> like, God, I just wanted to go to the witch hunt translation. Fuck you, how dare you? Go how into dare the you use the inferior translation. Oh my God. Okay, also, I'm changing the, I'm gonna take off the fucking subtitles now. Uh, translation. None. There we go. All right, we're in the airport. <laughs> At least oh god, it's fragments all over again. At least you can actually fast forward through this part, and it's not like how it was beforehand. I mean, we can, I mean, we can fast forward through other things before. Oh my fucking god! I'm dead. I mean, like they had this too. On the side. Oh, oh, hey. yeah, it's actually not that bad. Yeah, no, it's like, the skip is pretty fucking fast. Uh, uh, I was talking about the background for unlocking episode two. Oh, for fuck's two. sake! Let me in! Let me in! <laughs> Stop! <laughs> no, I don't need to see this! To, you, you <laughs> and if you look to your left, it. Orange has turned into Eric Andre. <laughs> you, you wanna on in? You, know you know what, fuck, you guys, are suff you guys are You and the viewers <laughs> at home are suffering with me as well. I was just about to ask, oh, you wanna un- The island is to explode in five minutes. Oh my god. See, see if, they, if they just yeah. fucking told me how to change it from the fucking beginning, I wouldn't mind. Just in case you forgot who our cast was. I was wondering how come you didn't see that in the when we were given this. Orange, what would you do if during these credits all of a sudden it said guest starring the Parasite Skulls unit? I would be very concerned. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about, LaRouche? What do you mean? Turn that poop into wine. Turn that poop into wine. Turn that poop into wine. I hope it doesn't. It's an Eric Andre bit. Uh, I hope it doesn't. I hope it doesn't try there. validating again the next time I open it. I have to fucking skip to the, to the shit. Worry, don't worry. Once you just what you do, you find where the save location is and you fucking back that shit up. This does give me an opportunity to go ahead and say that Kyrie was asking some pretty interesting questions about this. Oh yeah, I guess mm -hmm. so this, this can just kind of be like a weird like pseudo question time while we're waiting for me to fucking hold down the control button. Nice. Watch us accidentally got, fast forward too fast to get to them shit. All right, we're moving. We're grooving. Valor, uh, uh, incest. We're just moving. Come Motion sickness will be real in five minutes. You look like your father, you look like your daughter. Whoa, 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 Yo, I'm hard. I'm an echo the Tory. <laughs> the Tory. This is gonna be a fun in editing. Yeah, it is, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. Guess what? Uh, three, four. Uh, uh, can't wait for hey, you to get here. Hey, the oh, birds. So the Umineko are gone. The Umineko no, no, no longer knock a quarter. <laughs> <laughs> you mean it's like, it's like the Umineko when they cry? <laughs> Rose Garden, Rose Garden, Rose Garden, Rose what? Garden, Lily Lily's Rose, Rose Garden. Rose, 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 Rose Garden. More like Rose Let's Garden. Let's fucking go. 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 let us can we, oh, when, wait, uh, when it gets to, uh, when it gets to Emma roasting Nasui, can we, can we actually read that again one more time for the one more? No. 
No, no, no I'm not no, reading that we again. Have the show, we have to get there as fast. We gotta go. We, we gotta know, be like Lynn Carter in this gift. Take you. We <laughs> gotta go fast. <laughs> Just fucking. Oh, hey, there's. Oh, oh, no. Glass. Glass shattering. Two points. Disturbed. It's blue rose. What the fuck? Why did Kuma sound break the glass? That's so fucked up. <laughs> it's two holes. It's blue rose from Devil May Cry. To everybody yeah. currently watching on Twitch, we are very sorry about these current technical Boob. difficulties. <laughs> Boobs! Boobs! <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! Potted boobs up ahead! Tits, big ones! I think one. it's time to apologize, and the first thing you say afterwards is boobs? Battler uh, currently- Battler is speedrunning a Maneko when they cry uh, right now. <laughs> so, um, uh, Orange, thank God we're doing this right now. Is this what is I, if you want to do this, I might have seen a spot. Oh my god, guys, words, one at a time. Molest me not. <laughs> no, nobody's. <laughs> uh, as I was saying, what Digital was saying earlier is, and I'll agree with him on this statement. Thank fuck we didn't do the unlock episode two route because, oh boy, if we had the chapter select alone, we would have seen some shit. Yeah. <laughs> I don't would think it shows. No, uh, really. Look at Fight Club B jerky. That's what it shows. Oh, hold on. Hold on. Hey, hey, hey! First rule of Fight Club, motherfuckers. Do I mean, not talk about Fight Club! I mean, they kind of have to. Uh, kind of have to. It's the, it's <laughs> the Fight Club is where they put the Umineckos <laughs> Alright, right, 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 history report. Uh, shit. Piss. Oh, Battler. I see. Battler. Battler. Meanwhile, on Dynasty. Wow, 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 wow. Put the instant transmission effect 15 different times. Jesus, I can't instant believe instant we've made it farther my boy. in this one episode than the last like three combined. <laughs> Meanwhile, on Shark Tank, <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were gonna say "Meanwhile on Shark Tail" for a second. Hey, Orange is uh, living in the city. Uh, copyrighted? I have no idea. Probably not. Honestly. Fuck. Meanwhile, on fantastical murder. Oh, sick ass bird, roasted. Ava Booba. You mean dramatical order? <laughs> no, it's not! God damn it. This is Beatrice! She's fucking with us even now! Man, Beatrice be like... I, I don't believe in ghosts. That punk-ass bitch can't do shit. Epitaph of the Blood! Your favorite hentai! Dude! Well, good thing you, Never good thing go ahead and tell witch. off anything that's involving with a curse or a witch or anything like I mean, that. Like, why, you why would you dragged to hell! Why wouldn't you want Beatrice in your house? Dragged really? to hell what? retribution. Oh. I don't look at Dragon to hell. She seems like a lovely lady. I am scared of it. First of all, Dragon to Hell was trash. Secondly, you're talking to the person who likes it too. Let's get into it. Oh yeah, sir. People, I think some people need a lot of money right now, guys. I need my money. I need it now. Evil Dead. If you need cash now, call JT. Therefore, more than anything else. 877 <laughs> cash now. <laughs> call JT. I have a structured settlement and I need cash now. My boy can be over here being furniture. 877 cash now. We just keep like, 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 the I'm just. I am like half tempted to keep most of this in, but like have the Lin Car running GIF like overlaid over it. Yes, 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 yes. Do it, do it, do it, do it. Do you think Lin Car would get pissed at us if we did that? He would kind of. Yeah, he probably would. I mean, hey, if Lin Car gives us free publicity, I wouldn't mind. Maybe for maybe for just like a few seconds to have the GIF in there. And then right. just. Meanwhile, so that way we. Flee. So that way we. Sorry. So that Sometimes way we don't time. get completely just struck. I mean, I, I don't think he'll get you struck. I, he just doesn't like it being used. And I go like, but like you're so funny. funny. Review him. We just get a sponsorship with JG Wentworth. Uh, today's sponsor Hell is yeah. John Earbuds. Child abuse. We're 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 sponsored by the hit people with the channel. <laughs> Ryukishi, Seven, please sponsor us, I beg you. <laughs> Ryukishi just Today's comes in and starts. Yeah, there's no such thing as magic right, unless then... you're playing Raid Shadow Legend. Yeah, that's right. We're at right hashtag. Isn't a <laughs> hashtag? Isn't this, a, isn't this speed run just basically Meanwhile, what happened in uh, Higurashi Go? Oh, yeah, oh exactly. not Shane Dawson. I mean, the Twitch episode is brought to you by the letters W, T, and F. Bruh. <laughs> this is a certified bro moment. In your hour, My boy John. Cannon out here. I can't believe fucking Cannon saved Maria's life from that fucking alligator. 
But if we get to it, and turns out the witch hunt that this file has is like the Duwang of Umi Neko. <laughs> Meanwhile, Duwang! <laughs> Meanwhile, in the joke that we started about five minutes ago. Alright, alright, here, here. We're getting there, we're getting there, we're getting there, we're getting there. Meanwhile, at the Hall of Justice. Beautiful. Wokinjima. True. There is no other place. Passes, 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 we're here uh, now. I'm, I'm skipping. We're doing And if it doesn't save again this time, then we can blame can. Orange's technical difficulties. And in secondary, we can blame Mer and Beatrice. Also, now you can actually tell when the characters are speaking in English. <laughs> Wait, what do you mean English? Wait, what do you mean that like, you can now tell? Uh, basically, whenever they do English, uh, they'll do like little br they'll do like little uh, cone brackets around their around their dialogue. Yeah, Cone here. bracket. Uh, so yeah, here. Uh, dialogue, 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 dialogue. Uh, we gotta wait till- just to keep doing it till Kyrie shows up. Good call, cause I seriously wanted to get these notes in. Oh, okay, here we go. So she catched some sarcasm. Shrugged, uh, da 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 Feels sick. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He spasses of a duty. Yeah, okay. Full brunt. I will make a mental note. We were, like, facing the windows, so. Mm -hmm. I still stuck on the topic. Yeah, 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 yeah. Could possibly be someone who's doing the other thing with the thing. I've already got my notes. We can talk about that later. Hashtag femdom. It's not femdom. Uh, you don't know. It's not femdom unless there's Wait. a whip involved. Wait, have we? Wait, uh, no, it isn't. No, it this, isn't. This is our stuff we've gotten uh, to yet. Big I know we got the stupefaction. There are many instruments of the femdom. Did, did it say hashtag stupefaction? Mm -hmm. No. no. That was a Giant musical note. Okay, yeah. Alright, so we're getting slip. to the okay, we're getting to the scene like proper now. Also I'm gonna turn on the fucking I'm gonna turn on the effect volume because that's a really oh, don't look, don't look. Turn on the fucking oh, not the Shut up. Stress, the grandfather's never the grandfather but Effect the volume. Sure. Really stressed from the mansion ever that wasn't seen anywhere in like Uh so let's see. Yeah, 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 I know, I know, I know. Shut up, 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 shut up. So you have think, to do the tutorial. Uh huh. Okay. So is this? I think this is where we were kind of getting to, or I think we're here now. Uh, we didn't talk about her, how how hasty her line of reasoning was, right? We did. Okay. Yeah, we did. Okay. She hasn't gotten to talking about flipping over the chessboard oh, yet. Oh yeah, we haven't done chessboard thinking stuff yet. Okay, there's devil's proof. Yeah, though. Spin the chessboard around. Spin the chessboard around. The chessboard around. There you around. go. Yeah. Saved. Are you happy now, Orange? Yeah, influenced by yes, yes, we yes, are. I am. This was very much worth it. Yeah, the translation is like vastly superior. Meh. Take your word for it. I'm influenced by these words for, and use them uh, myself from time to time. We need to start trying to, move, uh, trying to find a move in chess or shogi. Then by spinning the, the board around and looking at everything from your opponent's standpoint, you'll have to see a strategy that'll give you the upper hand. It means turning things around and putting yourself in your opponent's shoes. You see? Let's say that a 19th person called Beatrice actually exists. That person must have managed without being seen by anyone to stealthily arrive on this island and remain hidden ever since. Maybe they had some reason, okay? In that case, why did they go to all of the trouble of appearing before Maria and handing her the letter? It really was a contradiction. If they had for some reason, if they had some reason for hiding themselves, they should have stayed hidden the whole time. But even so, they had appeared openly in front of Maria. Then... Wait. Maria said it herself. Said that the witch made her a messenger. A messenger. Maybe that's because Maria was the youngest and looked the most obedient. Why would they need a messenger? If they just wanted a letter delivered to the family conference, they could have mailed it. If they mailed it to each of the four siblings, no one would be able to ignore it. There was no need for this person to carry it themselves and secretly deliver it by hand. That's, that really does sound pretty weird. In the first place, if Beatrice existed and wanted to make her presence known to everyone, then she could have just openly presented herself to all of us. 
Despite that, she chose the vague method of appearing through a little girl called Maria-chan, and only gave us a vague impression of who she was. Contradiction. Let's go a little deeper, shall we? This is where we were. She appeared in front of Maria, trying to give us the impression that a 19th person existed. And yet, she still hasn't appeared before us and is hiding somewhere at this very moment. Think about those contradictions. You've got to keep these things in mind when you spin the chessboard around. In short, if a person wants to leave us with the impression that Beatrice exists as the 19th person, what might be their goal? If this person wanted to hide, then they wouldn't have made their presence known. If they wanted to show themselves, they wouldn't have used the, the roundabout approach of entrusting someone with a letter. Which means... It's simple. Beatrice is one of the 18 people. That's why they wanted to create an illusion that there are more than 18 people. The 19th person was revealed so spectacularly. If someone were to profit from this, it wouldn't be some 19th person in hiding. It'd be one of the original 18 people. Of course, this reasoning is full of holes. If you turn over even a few of its premises, it'll simply fall apart. But I'm almost completely certain it's correct. This is starting to feel pretty creepy. Some of the Marie an umbrella and handed her the letter. Supposedly, none of the 18 did this. And yet, Beatrice was hidden among those 18. What was the person- what was this person planning? Having their true form pretending to be Beatrice. Hmm. I suspected it might have been Maria Chan play-acting, but the contents of the message were extremely complicated, and it's hard to imagine Maria Chan writing that herself. However, I can't deny the possibility that Maria Chan is working together with someone. Oh, wait a sec. Maria's a nine-year-old kid, right? What could she possibly be planning with? Who? Who could she? Who? Who could she possibly be planning with? And what about her? What about her straightforward, overly honest, obedient nature? Yes, I also understand what kind of person Maria Chan is. But that's exactly why I think it's possible. <laughs> that girl's a dreamer who can't help but look up to and blindly accept the existence of witches. So if a person appeared in front of her and claimed to be the witch Beatrice, Maria Chan would happily swallow it up, I think. So now you're saying that if someone disguised themselves by wearing that fancy dress from the portrait, tricking Maria wouldn't be that hard? Of course, with that reasoning, all of us women would become the primary suspects. Anyway, who did Maria Chan encounter? Learning the details of that question would be the best key to solving this riddle. But this key has been firmly locked away inside Maria Chan's heart. Everyone denied the existence of the witch without listening to her, rajing her too much with questions about who Beatrice actually was. She probably won't open her heart to the adults now. In the dim hall in front of the portrait of Beatrice, Maria was sobbing. Sorry, taking notes. <laughs> no one believes I met Beatrice. <laughs> you know, I don't no matter Beatrice gave me. They still don't believe me. Anyway, Maria Chan's holding the key. The key to whether Beatrice is one of the 18 people or a 19th person. Maria's stubborn, right? When that girl gets angry, it's prayer to make her feel better. Badler Kun. I think a kid like you would be better at cheering her up than an adult like me. After she's feeling better, try asking. 
I know you don't care about all this back and forth about the inheritance. But don't you find this Western mansion mystery situation exciting? Who in the world is this person who gave Maria Chan the letter? It makes your intellectual curiosity ache. There's something else aching. <laughs> you're actually pretty tough. Thing you're still excited about being dragged through this endless money talk. Adults can be pretty amazing. I shrugged exasperatedly. I did notice something. Kiri had noticed how dejected I was after overhearing our parents' turbulent discussion. Probably trying to clear the air. At the very least, I'd recovered enough to voice my complaints. She wasn't my real mother, but I never, so I never felt like calling her mom. But it did make me think that she's a real adult. Hey, Brat, so this is where you were. God damn it. Kyrie, you really took your time fixing your makeup, didn't you? Think I'll make a habit of going out to touch up my makeup, too. I'm sorry. A woman's makeup takes a long time. So? How has the discussion been without me? Hopefully fruitful. <laughs> I'm sure everything was all peaceful and harmonious. Kira-san poked the weak spot into my arm with her elbow. We decided to take a break to cool our heads a little. It looks like we'll all be at it all night. It makes me want to cry. His way of talking hasn't changed, but he couldn't completely hide his fatigue. I couldn't say I was sympathetic, but he looked pitiful compared to his normal energetic self. Still, that rain's just awful. I really don't want to go back to the guest house. It looks like Natsuhine-san set things up so we could spend the night here in the mansion. What'll we do? We don't need to decide until you're done, right? If you run so low on energy that you can't return to your room, then maybe we can take them up on their offer. You're right. We can think about it later. What about you, Battler? If I stay I'd just get in the way. I'll be nice and go back over there. I see. Will you go back soon? I don't know. It'd be lonely to head back by myself. I got all the kids and we'll head out. Okay. You go do that. Also, Battler. You won't be going to sleep that evening, right? Yeah. Probably up talking with the cousins. I think we'll be up all night. Is there a problem with that? I see. If you're still awake when the adults' discussion is over, I want to have a little talk as a family. A what? That doesn't sound like you. Apparently, Curious I was thinking the same thing. What are you talking about? Jess in a small voice. But curious I didn't have a clue what Dad meant either. I also want to talk to you about it, Kyrie. I'll tell you later, so don't ask now. Please. Well, just continue to gaslight me, will you? Hmm? Gaslight, gatekeep, girl boss. <laughs> the, three, yeah. the three tenets. Alright, alright, alright. I don't know if anyone neglects the concept of family as much as the old bastard. Nice thing you were going to have a talk as a family? Both Kyrie-san and I couldn't help but get wide-eyed. Don't look so terrified. I'm the one who should be terrified. After all... <laughs> At that point, he swallowed his words for an instant. Even though putting on airs of importance was, wasn't much, much like my dad. <laughs> You're freaking me out, Dad. I've been on a family's gathered here now, right? You make a big deal out of it and spit it all out. Please do. I'm probably... I will probably be killed. There was a huge crash of thunder. It must have been really close. Dad's expression, brightly illuminated by the lightning was burned into my eyes. Dad's face, which always looked so sure of itself, and which always wore in a taunting expression, was strangely frail in a way I couldn't really explain. 
It was so worn out that it looked like a different person. W what? What are you talking about? It doesn't sound like you at all. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> what happened? You look so timid all of a sudden. It's not like you. I'm gonna go fix my makeup, too. Don't follow me. Dad turned away, weakly. After that, only Kyrie and I were left. So wide-eyed. Hmm. What did he say? Tonight. He'll be killed? We don't think that mysterious letter scared- You don't think that mysterious letter scared him, did you? He's been watching too many serial murder movies. Hmm. Kyrie san didn't answer my lightheaded words and continued to stare at my dad's disappearing back. Battler Cook, when you told Rudolf san to spill the beans right away, he left without telling us anything. Even though he said he had something to say to both of us, he didn't answer you. Why? Spin the chessboard around. What do you see? Well, when he said he wanted to talk, but then couldn't, that's a contradiction. What? Can't you see something by looking from Dad's perspective? <laughs> Yes, I can see something. He wants to talk about something. However, he doesn't have the courage to bring it up. So he actually means chase after me, talk to me, and ask me about it yourself. By saying, don't follow me, he actually means the opposite. He actually means follow me and force me to answer. Seriously, what a spoiled brat. What? Can you really call that reasoning? No, it's <laughs> called feminine intuition. And being married to your father. Hashtag femdom. <laughs> That's ridiculous. <laughs> She's your mother, Battler Christ. <laughs> yeah, she is it by blood. I'm saying that to you, Dead the mom. reader, not me. <laughs> <laughs> Can great not private and blood. police detectives... Can great private and police detectives deduce the emotions and feelings between men and women? They can't, right? Figuring out the feelings of the opposite sex is an even more advanced art than exposing the tricks in difficult crime cases. If you ask me, romance novels have much deeper mysteries than masterpiece mystery novels. <laughs> I see. Is that how it is? I'll stand alongside that spoiled brat. He normally loves to bluff, but tonight he's completely tired out from that heated discussion. He probably wants someone to lean on at the moment. And responding to that is, need is the role of his partner. Ha! Sounds passionate. And I'll leave the old bastard in your hands. Yes, leave it to me. <laughs> I call that to Kiri as the parting back. Eh? Huh? Oh, fuck. What? Uh, I wanted to say thanks. Oh, fuck! No! Why do you keep doing that? Uh, it's very... It's very, uh, uh finicky. Like, I just kind of, like, slightly adjust my fucking... My, uh, my wheel. It just goes... Thanks, dude, my gloomy mood has cleared up, cleared up a lot. That's good. Communication is important. After answering with a wink, Kyrie-san follows her dad. <laughs> Not so he could be forced, it could be found in a dimly lit hallway. Now that the thunder would it would crash, but this had no effect on Natsuhi's expression. She looked completely worn out. Discussions that had just taken place between the relatives in the dining hall were repeating itself inside Natsuhi's mind. Beatrice had proclaimed that in addition to the gold, all of the inheritance and property of the Ashurmia family would be given to the person who could solve the riddle. In other words, she planned to undermine the absolute guarantee that Krauss, as the oldest brother, had to succeed the, the family head. Originally, the other siblings had absolutely no chance to inherit the headship. To them, this proposal by Beatrice was extremely desirable. It, obvi it was obvious that they, were, they, would, they would accept it. Nah. 
There was no need to play some clumsy detective game. Not so he knew that this so-called 19th person, Beatrice, couldn't exist. Also, aside, I'm actually I'm glad they fucking fixed it so Beatrice isn't in all caps all the time. <laughs> that was really silly. Naturally, Beatrice had was nothing more than a fictional character used that uses a pat used to pass a message that Kinzo had written himself. As proof, Kinzo remained stubbornly neutral as to the letter's authenticity. It, he was completely ignoring the reckless claims that he shouldn't be able to ignore. That he had given up the head's ring. In short, Kinzo worthlessly admitted that the letter had uh, held its own message. Most likely, one of the servants had given Maria the letter. Kinzo probably worked on an elaborate plan where the dress from the portrait would, would be prepared. And someone, probably Shannon, would be made to wear and deliver the letter and the umbrella. By doing that, he could make it seem like the witch from the portrait actually existed. No, if anything, that alone was proof that Kinzo was behind all this. In that case, it was the same as Kinzo trying to button on the sibling's private discussion. Then, Kinzo, by announcing that he had given everything to the person who solved the riddle, could weaken Krauss's overwhelming advantage. Now it was certain. Kinzo had eavesdropped on the sibling's discussion in the parlor earlier that day. So he had known that Kr how, how Kraus had staved off the, the attack by the other three. And to make the scales of the battle go back into balance, he sent out the strange letter which benefited Kraus's rivals. Mm. He was trying to push this crazy theory so that Rosa, who had a weak position among the siblings because of her age, would join with Ava and Rudolph. Then with a 3 to one advantage, they would all be, over, they'd all, they'd be able to overwhelm Kraus yet again and make the ridiculous theories get accepted by force. And by doing that, he gave them the power to resettle what had once been a nearly de decided conflict. They had now started to report, repeatedly pressing Kraus to, pr to pay them a large amount of money. He used the condition that all the siblings would guarantee Kraus' position of the successor. Talk about advanced payments was, was being brought up again, despite having, despite having been rejected once. Of course, even without the story about the hidden gold, the Ashumi family's store of wealth was vast. That store of wealth alone was more than enough. Even if the hidden gold was buried forever along with Kinzo's death, there would be more than enough to satisfy. Though, for even if they weren't interested in the gold itself, Kinzo had mass managed to inst instill the lifelong fear that, on the off chance that someone found the gold, that person would be granted the headship. And this kind of Achilles heel would definitely be taken advantage of by someone sooner or later. The only person with this fatal weakness was, was the successor, Kraus. The other siblings had found. No, they had been told by Kins about something that only Kraus could lose, and they had thoroughly taken advantage of that. Nazi, as Kraus's only ally in his painful position and his wife, wanted to fight alongside him. She kept trying to explain to him the existence of the gold itself was a farce and there was no need for him to compromise. Kraus always told Natsuhi, he had told all the siblings. He always, always said that his, the hidden gold was nothing more than an illusion created by Kinzo. Therefore, Nazi had believed that it, as his wife, it, and, it is, and, and had supported her husband on that foundation. Even so, Natsuhi's words didn't reach Kraus. Even though Natsuhi had fought so hard and lent all of her strength, he continued to fight by himself and was trying to compromise with the other three siblings. Natsuhi sadly and weakly wondered what she could not, why she could not be of use to him, and started getting angry. It happened when everyone decided to take a short break and cool their heads. Natsuhi had flared up against Kraus. Enraged, she had asked why she could not be of use, not be useful to him. He had then told her to, that he wanted to talk about something, and invited her into a room that she would normally not be allowed to enter. The room had been sealed with a heavy-looking padlock, and just looking at it had given her an uncomfortable feeling. There's no need for you to worry about anything said by those three, or even the suspicious person who calls herself Beatrice. After all, the gold is just a ruse created by father. There's no way something like that could be found. Your position as the successor is a solid fact. What are you afraid of? Press move the padlock on the door. He then motioned for Natsuhi to enter. Enter. I've seen enough anime to know where this is going! Oh no. This is my playroom, Natsuhi. What, what is this? 
There's something I want you to see. I've never shown you this before. Is it? It's just like that book I read! Natsu timidly opened the door with a dubious expression on her face. It was pitch black. She searched for the switch to turn on the lights, but since this was her first time in the room, she didn't know where it was. I was ended behind her, pushing her in. When I closed the door before turning the loft the on the lights, the two were swallowed up by the darkness. I was enough crowds locking the door rang after the dark. What, what are you doing? The, the lights! I'm turning them on now. Wait. As he said, when Krauss pushed the switch on the wall, a flickering light turned on and lit up the room. Th that is... Nazi had her breath taken away. There had no windows and at a glance it appeared to be empty. In the middle of the room, a small round table had been set. And all the lights brightened only on that table. They were really as if it was leading the part, the part in, pl in a play. On top of the table, a red tablecloth of elaborate design had been set out, covered with dust. And on top of that, something about the size of a grown man's arm had been set down. That something took Natsuhi's breath away. Oh. It's a gold ingot of incredible purity. Without this, no one would have believed in the legend of the gold. It was an ingot of solid gold. Even in the faint of light, it struck with a noble and dignified gleam. Ooh. This isn't a proper ingot. I don't even know whether it was cast inside or outside the country. It took a high level of skill to make it the purest of solid gold ingots. In order to verify that purity, it was standard of the original foundry in the name of the bank and get that guaranteed it imprinted on the gold. However, this ingot did not have had that kind of seal. The mysterious bar had come from an unknown foundry. Look here. There's nothing to be afraid of. It's just a bar of gold. Natsuhi, following Krauss's words, timidly approached the ingot. Right there. Press pointed at the surface of the ingot. Not so he concentrated on that on that section. <sighs> right there was the thin imprint of the one winged eagle crest. Not so his breath was taken away once again. That's right. This is the legendary ingot that Father said he received from the witch that the president of Marceau witnessed and was allowed to select at random to take back with him. That gained the trust of the fixers in the business world. I had to use all possible means to find it. I knew he was talking out his ass! I found it before the other siblings could. How oh, good. Then, the legend of Father's Gold is... It actually exists. The gold that Ushirimi Akinzo received from Beatrice actually exists. Impossible. So, it really does exist. Natsuhi was shocked. Perhaps I said that the Kinzo's gold was just a fabrication. She had believed it as his wife. However, the reality was different. Since he held definitive proof, he had been more certain than any of the other siblings that the legend of the gold was true. Because of this, Krauss was deeply frightened at the possibility that someone other than himself would find the gold he'd failed to find, costing him everything. But to not tell you the truth is more than enough to split open her heart. She had thought that, as Krauss's wife, she should be the cl his closest confidant. Which is why she had selflessly supported him. And yet, he hid his fact, this fact from her until today. Why? Uh, have I been so undeserving of your trust? 
I didn't mean it like that. It was only that there was no need to mention it. Is... Is that all the... A wife... Means to you? Calm down. Becoming passionate easily is one of your bad habits. You're the one who's making me like that, aren't you? I've been supporting you as a wife ever since I married into this family. For your sake, I threw away the family I was born into, and I've been offering up my heart and my body to serve you. And in return, this is what I get? How could... How could you... Kraus grimaced, looking annoyed. His expression effectively communicated how much he disliked this part of Nazi, even if he didn't say it out loud. It doesn't look like I won't be of any use to you anymore. Hmm, that's fine. <gasps> I can resolve the troubles with the siblings by myself. I don't need your help. That's wrong! This is the Yushirumi of family's problem! It's true that I am not permitted to wear the family crest on my body. But I am still your wife! Even so, are you saying I'm not capable of helping you? Are you? I especially wouldn't want to risk getting you involved. It would probably make your headaches even worse than they are now. Take a rest for today. The siblings will deal with the siblings' problems. It has nothing to do with you. That's all. Adele had- I'm gonna go close the door real quick. Hold on a second. Man, that door closed and Omineko really got you in the mood to close some doors. Fuck you, Zaz. You can't judge me when you have that <laughs> fucking image of Natsui as your profile picture. Oh, what do you mean? What do you mean? Nothing I think you, you and mean? I mean? What do you I mean? I think you, you and I mean? Mean? Also, I think we can all agree, fuck Kraus with a rusty screwdriver. Anyone? Anyone? Uh, Should go uh, right up the butt. Can I be honest? Smelly. Can I be honest that Kraus is a, a fucking my favorite uh, uh, parent? <laughs> a dull headache tormented Natsuhi. No matter what medicine she took, no matter what sense she burned, it wouldn't heal. In fact, simply wandering alone through the dark corridors and listening to the sound of the rain seemed, seemed to be a better cure. I may be Natsuhi, but I must never Natsuhi. Ushiro Mia Natsuhi. I have been despised and treated as a borrowed womb and insulted when I couldn't even fill that role. Even so, I have tried to properly perform my duties as a wife. But now, even my husband has rejected me. I've done my best raising my daughter as if it were the last job left to me. However, I've had no release from my anger and sadness and they've caused me to subconsciously strain that relationship, too. Because I've been excessively strict in Jessica's education, she dislikes me thoroughly. She despises me for having no interest in anything but grades. There is no longer anything I can do for the Yoshiromita family. No, that's no good. Why did all I must help my husband and beat back the schemes of the other greedy siblings? I must. The family head won't be around much longer. Eventually, Crocs will succeed the head. And the next successor will be Jessica. Strictly speaking, the man who enters the family by marrying Jessica will become the next head. But it all comes to the same thing. I have to make Jessica an excellent successor, whom everyone will accept is worthy to take over the Yoshiromiya family. In the days to come, the greedy Yoshiromiya, Eva, will probably be plotting to find some fault within the main family. And if all goes as she plans, 
Jessica will be dragged down from the succession with George set up in her place. It is regrettable. But George is a man, and even more, has matured as a person. Compared to Jessica, who is right in the middle of her rebellious period, and grades are slightly below average, it can be seen at a glance who is more fit to succeed the head. So in order to secure Jessica's position, I need to turn her into an excellent person. After doing that, I want to find her an excellent husband worthy of the excellent person she will have become. A wonderful man who will truly accept Jessica and stay with her through all of life's joys and sorrows. I was not so you're trying to ensure her daughter was fulfilling some desire of her own. Trust. Yeah. Not so you thought back to the days when she'd have no choice but to marry into the Ashermia family because of that unavoidable fate. To block that from her memory. There's a word for this. She had consciously forgotten it and had actively attended to the life she'd been given as a Shermia Natsu. In doing, she had built up a new life. Just now, it felt like all that, all that had been casually rejected. How should I think as I live my life? I do not know. Not so we helplessly rested her head against the glass of the window. The glass was just cool thanks to the raindrops being against it. That's somehow refreshing, even though it should have been emotionless. Right then it seemed to be the only thing that could understand Natsu. At that point, even if someone had appeared, Natsu didn't intend to pay any attention to them. But she did pay attention, because it was, it was her beloved daughter. Uh, oh, it's you, Mom. What the heck are you doing in a place like this? Thought you were a ghost. Just like always, her words were rough and not at all like a girl's. Instinctively, words of rebuke rose to Natsuhi's throat. However, their strength gave out, gave out and didn't escape her lips. Jessica. Forgive me, but my headache is awful. Please leave me be. I see. Uh... Jessica was seeing her mother in a position of feebleness for the first time. She was considerably dis disconcerted. Disconcerted. <laughs> Until just now, she'd been filled with the contempt for all of her, all of the parents, including her mother. But now those feelings have been completely swept swept away. Her mother's utterly exhausted face had wiped them all out. <laughs> it is in this place, the word the words the words George had told her floated back up into into her mind. Our parents are doing their best in our own way. And because their families are counting on them, they can't afford to keep everything pleasant. They have a healthy, a heavy responsibility to fight. Her mother had been standing around in the dimly lit hallway, as no one had tried to understand, understand that in her. Jessica hated her mother. So she had no intention of speaking kindly to Natsuhi just because she was looking a bit frail. So when she attempted to speak kindly to her mother anyway, she had to clench her fists and gather up the words from deep in her heart. Love you, Riri! It's... Sorry. No problem. Sorry, my dog sneezed. Hmm. It... It sounds like you've really got your hands full with that meeting thing. It has nothing to do with you. Please go somewhere else. Is your headache bad? Sh should I go get some medicine? You don't have to trouble yourself. Please, leave me alone. Natsuhi wasn't being cold. She just wanted her daughter to go far away that she wouldn't have to bump against Natsuhi's own short temper. But there was no chance that Jessica would realize this. Oh, uh, okay. Jessica hung her head, looking sad. Seeing that expression, Natsuhi recognized that the kindness that Jessica was trying to muster. She gave her head a small shake to drive away her own unkind feelings. Then I'll leave. I'll be with the other cousins, so I won't get in the way of the adults. 
See you later. Wait there. She called Jessica, who was looking, who was trying to leave and looked lonely, into a stop. What? Thank you for being so considerate. It isn't good of me to go to sleep and leave you alone. Don't talk like that! You'll bring bad luck! I've made you worry. But I'm okay now. I will go. If I let my daughter see me this feeble any longer, it'll only make her feel more uneasy. With that thought in mind, Natsu, he left Jessica with words of gratitude and made to depart. This time, Jessica called out to her mother's back. Natsu, he stopped and turned around, asking what business Jessica had with her. Jessica herself didn't know why she'd stopped her mother. For a while, she smiled wryly, muttering to herself as she hesitated over what to say. Putting her in her pockets when her hand touched something and she took it out. Uh, um, hey, Mom! I, uh, was given a charm today. What was it? A charm against magic? Um, uh, I'm pretty sure that you were supposed to hang it from your doorknob. I, I think. <laughs> I, I forget. There's no point in me having it. So I'll let you take it. It was the scorpion charm that Maria had given her on the beach. I should have the various effects from Maria. Jessica's mind had gone blank, and she was just barely able to say even that much. Jessica, thinking that her mother probably wouldn't accept it anyway, immediately drew back the hand she had struck at, stuck out, grasping the charm. When Natsuhi came back to take it, she was extremely shocked. And what is this? Some kind of prize toy? Well, it's... I think it's something like that. I guess you wouldn't really expect a charm that looks like a toy to do anything. But her mother took the charm from her when she grasped it in her hand, when she grasped it in her hand. Thank you. I'll take good care of it. Sometime soon, in exchange. Why don't I give you a charm that was important to me when I was a child? It's not like that's why I gave it to you. But... Well, if you really say so. Then I will rest for now. My headache is awful. Try not to stay up too late. Sure. Not so he put the charm, the charm in her pocket and turned away. She then disappeared into the dark hall. That was actually a really sweet moment. Oh, geez, it's still going. This... Do we uh, want to call it here? This seems like it'd probably be a yeah, good point. Guys, I'm yeah, guys, it's getting work. pretty late. Borrow. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Unfortunately, we lost all of how it's like, oh, this yeah. is, oh, it's been a while since George. I should probably just turn on push to talk. And then <laughs> the moment I go to do that and turn off voice activity, <laughs> George appears. Hi, everyone. I'm George Shiramiya from the hit game. Wait, uh, why is... Wait, game total game. clicks is calculated? Yeah. Every time you click. Oh that's god, that's right the fucking playtime, I forgot about that. <laughs> that's Bro. actually really cool. Mm -hmm. It'd be nice to see uh, how long it takes us to complete, like, the exact time. Well, I mean, uh, that's that's damaged now because of the reset, isn't it? We were at nine hours previously. Oh. Uh, also, we got footage. Mm-hmm. I was gonna say, we have, like, proof. Yeah. So, yeah, also, do don't we pause? We got receipts. Don't we pause in the uh, footage too? So we should be able to see the timer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so, so if, if you, I may. If you have to dip out now, like if you're too tired or whatever, that's fine. But if we want to field any questions uh, from people, that's. Yeah, that's do also we want to do option. that? Good, because I've got some. Okay. All right. Go ahead. Let's see here. I was listening deeper in to Curie's talk and everything. And I think her theory actually does hold some truth in at least a little degree of it. Okay. There are 18 people on Rokenjima. And of course, Beatrice being Beatrice. Whatever, listen now. Suck it, bitches. It sounds like Solace. 
not the point. The point is, she really is trying to make herself seem like a 19th member of the island. But this is a new theory I'm thinking of. What if she's actually unknowing, possessing one of the people on the island or in the family, but they're unknowing of it? I mean, Maria would be the prime candidate for that. Except that wouldn't make any sense, because Maria was given the invitation and the umbrella. She could have just lied about it. I mean, it. yeah, she, she is her envoy. She wants her to be treated properly. If I, if I may oh, ask, if I, if I can put it up, if I'm a little confused, you're saying, like, Beatrice, like, like is, like... Uh, was Beatrice it, was chose someone? her to deliver the message, yes. and then also gave her the umbrella so that, you know, she would, like, consider herself in her protection, in a way. Messenger. Or Beatrice just saw a kid out in the rain and figured, hey, if I have an umbrella and I have a spare, I'll go ahead and give this poor kid an umbrella. Wait a second, Beatrice was like the Super Rika from the end of Higurashi, right? No, no what are you talking what? about? What? 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 Wait, 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 he's thinking of Frederica. Frederica, no. Frederica, no, it's someone else. someone else. And what I mean is... Picture of what Beatrice looks like. And I mean... It's sort of like how a ghost or a spirit would randomly attach itself to you. Or like how you'd have a separate personality. You wouldn't know what the hell you were doing until somebody actually told you what happened. Yeah. It could make sense. It could make sense that somebody else on the island actually is harboring Maria's... Not Maria, sorry, fuck. Beatrice's spirit. I, I was gonna say, uh, why not Maria? I, uh... Sorry. Oh, yeah. Mucus. Listen, personally, what I think is considering Hanya was fucking real, I think Beatrice is fucking real too. <laughs> I'm willing to believe that, but it seems some conditions here are very different. Uh, but I mean, like, uh, one thing I will point out from Higurashi is that Hanyu seemed to be almost like the only, like, supernatural element to that, almost. Yeah, but if you will recall, it took a while for Hanyu to actually be seen and heard by everybody. And that was only because mm. she finally stopped being a bystander and other people acknowledged her existence. Wait, did they acknowledge her existence? Yes, they did. In mm. Chapter 7. And if it's- Yeah, when they were spirits, they were like, Hey, we re this is by why way, we didn't succeed, see you because you weren't out. here to help us. So but, you should probably pop they, out. This? As I... Sorry. What? Huh? No, Zaz should probably pop out because we are talking about Higurashi spoilers. Oh, I'm not talking about that. It's, oh, it's, it's not stuff that he doesn't already know from his own description. Anyways. Uh, Anyways. If it's one thing, that means somebody physical would have had to touch the ring that Kenzo tossed out into the storm. Hmm. I forgot he actually tossed that ring out in the storm. Do you, know, do you have any yeah. idea of who it could have yeah. been? Hmm. The person who's harboring Beatrice's spirit. Or Beatrice could be physical. Either way, it's just another theory that I have stacked up here. Hmm. I also have a minor note in here. Natsuki always looks like she has resting bitch face. <laughs> That's what yeah, she does. But like, no one's pointed out the, the, the most important detail, which is that her fucking titties are stretching the fabrics of her shirt. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I God, also God. have that in here, actually. Are you saying there's Bad a rating. milf alert? Yes, I, I have yelled milf alert for Natsui. Yeah. I'm also really thinking that maybe the servants believe in Beatrice more than the people who are actually in the actual family. Mm, I can see that. Well, the family going. doesn't really believe in it, except for Maria at all. I mean, like, the, the servants are kind of like, what is it? Uh, Kinzo trusts Genji more than fucking his blood relatives, so like... Which is honestly a better idea when you think about it. Sometimes your own family can get really unnerving and really disgusting, so the best thing you can do is just rely on people who are close enough as family to you. And that you're paying. Okay, wow. Way to expose that. Uh... Is Genji getting paid? I imagine these people are probably making at least some money. Hmm. It Plus, would be illegal for them not to. Plus, 
Canon doesn't seem to reject the idea of Beatrice. In fact, it seems like he's almost afraid of it. Hmm. Well, whenever he was looking out of the garden, he said it felt like it was looking into the witch's eyes, and it felt like he was being absorbed. That's not talk of somebody who just believes. I suppose. Mm -hmm. There was also more talk about coins being wagered. Coins? Enzo said that there were more coins being wagered, and he referred to this as not a game of chance, but as a game of roulette. And I know how roulette works. Not because I've ever betted on it. Which, thank God, I never did, because Jesus roulette is needlessly complicated. It's also very difficult to win at. It is. Unless you play so it the right way. Of, it's a game of incredible... Black. It's a game of incredible odds. Which right, means I'm about to pass out, so I'm just gonna say goodnight. I'll All see right, you see guys. You Sorry, should I stop? No, you keep going. Uh, no, you, no, you keep going. You keep, you keep, keep going. <laughs> We're being recorded, so it's fine. I'm leaving. Yeah. You keep going. That's how this works. Good night. Okay. Anyway, the way roulette works is that you can't only just bet on the colors. You also bet on the specific numbers. Which means your odds of winning increase the more ways you bet on things. The problem with that is, if you put everything in one specific number or color, or in one or both... Like, say, if you decided to just bet on 14 black, the only chance you'd have to win is if you were in there. But if you bet on the number 14 and on the color black itself without any specific indicators, you'd have a twice as higher chance of winning. Meaning Kinzo's got some long-term betting plans for this. Huh. Which yeah. means he's doing the same thing Rika was doing. Rika probably didn't have an understanding or inclination of what roulette was. But she was doing the same thing with her powers and her abilities, and her mm. chances of getting the good timeline that she desired. Kinzo that... is probably doing the same thing, so he can go ahead and get all of his belongings with Beatrice. So or he's think... just super hard simping and wanting her to sit on his face. So do you? Do you would you say that? Uh, what was it? You you think like uh, uh you think maybe Kinzo has like uh, a similar thing to Rika, where he might be like identifying like maybe fragments or something like that. It could be a possibility, but it feels more like Kinzo's trying to bet on the right side in the right point. Mm. If he can, then it would explain all of the other points, but again, that's just a theory. I'm also finding it interesting that Beatrice was referred to in herself as the family alchemist. If that even is Beatrice. Well, I mean, no. like... They, they made it clear that, that like, the the woman in the blonde... Uh, what, what was it? The woman in the painting is obviously Beatrice, right? Yep. So, like... It, they, unless, like, uh, Kenzo got uh, Keiichi's dad to draw a really hot anime girl. Like, there's probably something based off of it. I also just find it interesting that a witch called herself a family alchemist. Meaning she actually did alchemize that gold. So you're saying, uh, so you're saying that, uh, uh, Beatrice had created the gold herself and given it to Kinzo? It would probably be best to obtain that. 99% hmm. proof gold doesn't exist. Hmm. Not to mention... There are failed times where alchemists tried to go ahead and engineer gold. Maybe Kinzo at one point also tried to do the same thing and ended up failing dramatically. I don't know, anybody else want to go ahead and spitball on this? Um, if I may ask a question, um, back to the, the like, uh, uh, how many people are on Rokenjima at the current time, Con, uh, the... Do you think it's a... What's your personal opinion? How many people do you think are on the island? I want to say technically there could be 18. Technically there could be 19. But that's only if Beatrice is actually physical. It hmm. could still be 19 with Beatrice's spirit in harboring another person. Sorry, Beatrice harboring... Bleh. 
Beatrice spirit being it. hidden within somebody's body. There we go. Finally got it out. So you think uh, Beatrice might be possessing? possessing Maybe it's uh, still a nineteen. However, either way, there would still be nineteen people. Hmm. At least in my opinion. Until, uh, wait, so how many do we think, how many, like, just from our current observation, are there again, without Beatrice? Like, what number of people? Um, well, I, I think, uh, what was it? There's a, oh, you count them all from all seven names. There's a Shannon and Cannon, Genji, Kamisawa, Gota, uh, there's then... Oh, Nora says 18. Oh. Alright, so, uh, it could be that there's going to be 18, including Beatrice, after somebody dies. Well, I mean, like... Possibly. If that means anything, I don't know. That's just I guess to pick the brain it. a bit more, even if, let's say, Beatrice did, like, possess people, like, wouldn't that still be considered, like, a 19th, though? And that's what I'm saying. That depends on perspective. Yeah, perspective, I suppose. In my perspective, yes. To his my perspective, perspective yeah. it may still just be 18. Oh, man, so, do okay. you do you think that... Uh, uh, I, I guess my, my question now is that do you think uh, Beatrice is more physical than uh or like or more uh, was it more spirit like than physical that also all depends the way i've seen this series and the way i've seen this connecting with higurashi it could just be that magic needs belief in order to work like how you needed to believe and effectively pass a miracle uh i mean like i I probably wouldn't look it's, too hard sorry, on the Higurashi. Sorry, you want me to explain that a bit? Well, no, 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 I get what you're saying. It's it's that uh, I, I I will um actually fucking... What was it? There's actually... uh What was it? Like, I think me and Orange have stated this before, but like... Uh, uh, fucking... I don't think it's necessarily you'll get much by looking to the past of like... Higurashi so much? Because, uh, yeah, I think, this, I is think a we, new, this is a new world. I, uh, as we said previously before, these are so uh, uh, disconnected that you can't fucking... <laughs> what was it? Uh, We're just saying well, maybe try to treat them as like separate entities. Separate stories because like, uh, uh, again, maybe like they're not like super connected. But like, th that's just kind of a thing because it's like, again, we, we always say this. Uh, Umineko and Higurashi are for the most part kind of separated. Yeah, I'm so uh, saying, I'm not saying that they're I'm forget not everything that, you know about Higurashi. No, I'm kidding. I mean, like, uh, uh, fuck I... Him. Okay, so, so to reclarify, I said this before. Uh, uh, Ryukishi, in a many ways, sort of built this as a quote-unquote follow-up to not even follow, like more of an answer to Higurashi. Like it's it, it has a lot of similar ideas. But they're not one to one. Like this isn't a part of like a big expanded universe type deal. Like they're each, they're grounded in their own sets of realities. I was going to say, since everyone just started talking at once, I guess I'm not comparing the two, and I'm not saying they're connected. I'm just saying that maybe the magic system in this one works the same way. Hmm. All right. Okay. Mostly in mostly in that magic would need belief to actually work. Otherwise, you can't see it. You can't exactly just go ahead and have some kind of invisible wizard show up and say, Yo, what up? Mm. Because then again, it's also a good reason as to why this way it does create distrust. Not only are those siblings having their entire fortune just pulled out from underneath them by some invisible force, but she chose Maria of all people. Maybe because Maria actually believes that Beatrice exists. So Maria was able to see her. Hmm. So, do, uh, I guess, so to get that straight, because I, I kind of, uh, I was reading something, uh, what was it? You think, uh, uh Maria is the only one that can see Beatrice at the current moment? Be only because she believes in witches and she believes Beatrice exists. Okay, so... And believing in the existence of the gold doesn't inherently mean that you believe in Beatrice's existence. Hmm. hmm. All right. Okay. That, that's that's a. Uh, I will say from everything you said, that's actually a fair. Uh, uh, what was it? A fair guesstimate from what you've been given. Again, I am not telling you whether you're 
uh, you know, right or wrong or like a uh, uh, warm or hot. I'm just saying. That. I'm not saying that I am right or wrong. No, 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 no. I'm just, I'm just saying that. I'm, I'm just uh, adding that. I'm saying that he can't tell you. Confirm or deny nothing. I, I'm just making it. No, sound I know about that. I'm just that. continuously spitting out ideas and everything in my thought processes. Hmm. Also, can I go ahead and just say I called it when I said I knew Kraus was talking out of his ass about the gold. Hmm. It was a shock to me though. Yeah. Reading it, <laughs> I was like. <gasps> So, um, do you have anything else you want to talk about specifically? Let's see here. I wanted to figure out why exactly Rudolph thinks that he's going to be killed that night. Anyone else? What? Huh? Uh, uh, uh question. I can't quite think of any- I can't quite think of anything we would know at the moment, so- Dig deep. What do we know about Kraus? I mean, sorry, fuck, Rudolph. Fuck! God, they're both pretentious. They're both voiced by me. <laughs> I mean, if you want to, I could always do Rudolph. <laughs> did, did, uh, just curious, is LaRue cheering? Oh, he's probably watching the stream. He's watching the stream right now, yeah. Yeah, I was wondering, how is he responding to us in the Discord? Dig deep, guys. What's I a good mean, reason to like, say that Rudolph would be killed first? I, or they I would will, think or suspect that he'd be killed. I will say that at the time, I, I had thought that maybe, um, what was it, the adults had maybe discovered something that the, the children have, may have not, and may have, uh, he may have, like, been like, oh, fuck, I'm, I'm dead. But that's and I what don't I think that's the, the case. It feels more like he's definitely in. <laughs> Or that somebody figured something else out about the trial, or they realized that murdering the hypotenuse would mean more gold on the other side. I mean, like, yeah, to be honest, like, uh, as we previously stated, all these relatives have uh, a reason to kill, except for the cousins, obviously. Meaning, if they killed, then there would be less money for the other side and more money on theirs. Mm -hmm. So, like, so that is a legitimate worry. Uh, ultimately, yeah, like a uh, greed can do shit to a motherfucker. So you can, you can, uh, you can make an argument that everyone there has a motive. Even maybe even some of the servants as well. What is a worse motive for man than greed? I mean, like uh, I feel like they even set up a bit of a motive for uh, Natsui there, because uh, she obviously takes the Ishirimiya family's name like with high regard. Exactly. And it was pretty heart-wrenching, and I was actually starting to tear up whenever I was voicing Natsuhi there. She placed all that blind faith in her husband that she knew was a scumbag, still tried to stay by his side, and got let down. Mm. That's horrid. I mean, like, what was it? I, I guess to, to maybe throw this out, uh, maybe... Because it's like... I guess it's like really hard because it's like I'm trying to remember what I thought at the time, and I, and I don't remember what I was thinking. I guess, like I never really pinned down anyone as anything yet at that time because it was like I was still going through the story. So like, uh, I think it's really fascinating because it's like at the time. Well, I think yeah, I think at the time it was like, I, I think uh, what was it? Kraus had very uh, had very much uh, gotten a sour start with me. Hmm. And like, I'm also thinking, Natsuhi isn't capable of murder. Mm. She doesn't strike me as the kind of person who would, and even if she did, she'd immediately regret it. Mm. Maybe viciously hurting somebody, or flying off the handle, maybe, but she'd immediately regret it. I, I do want to know if that, uh, we have not seen uh, Natsuhi fucking slap the shit out of Jessica. Just, uh, just, uh, you know, use a very stern voice with her, unlike, uh, Rosa. No. I mean, the closest we got to that was Kinzo and the Wooden Sword. <laughs> okay, wow. Are you Kinzo and the I Wooden Sword? I honestly did forget about that for a second. Are you books about a Wooden Sword? In the original first few parts of the story, we ended up learning that Jessica was spanked on her bare ass with a Wooden Sword by Kinzo. Right. Well, yeah. that's in the recording now. Sword. Still, 
I also don't think that it's possible that she could have actually done that physically to Jessica. She said beforehand that she never really had an outlet for her anger or her sadness. And take it from me, when you repress those emotions, you get the worst possible fucking headaches. So she's just been bottling up her emotions this entire time, and it's just been causing her physical distress. Mm. True. I mean, like, uh, what was it? Fucking... Like, it's all very, uh, like, I would say weird, because it's like, uh, at, at this current juncture, we got one person... It feels like one of the parents, like, Rudolph's all like, I'm gonna fucking die tonight, and it feels like... Like, it feels like the rest of them... Well, I guess we haven't seen uh, Ava and Akiti Yoshi yet, but it feels like, uh, as we've seen so far, like, Krauss and Natsui uh, haven't even really discussed the idea of fucking dying tonight. Mm -hmm. I wonder if... I wonder if uh, Rudolph got, like, information, like, in his... under his door or some shit that's, like... like a letter or something. And was like, oh, oh god, there's shit on this letter that's going to- I'm going to die. That is an interesting idea. Like, I'm wondering if we just don't have the info yet, and since Maria got a letter, I'm wondering if other people are gonna get letters. I'm gonna write that down, that's actually a pretty plausible idea. Wait, Orange, who is that in chat who said that? I have no fucking idea. <laughs> if he says anything oh. else, just ban him. Mm. Wait, what was that? What? Uh, there was uh, a guy who went like, you're fat and ugly. I just went, love you too, bestie. <laughs> listen, listen, we're, we're, we, we like to take jabs at each other sometimes, but not to that level. Please cool it, my brother. Or whatever. I don't whatever. Know the fuck you are. I don't think they're even in chat anymore. Yeah, they just fucking dipped out. Eh, whatever. Me. Bill, that actually is a good possibility. One of but us? No, not that. No, sorry. I mean other people getting letters from Beatrice. So, um, oh, you think there might be more letters from Beatrice around? It could be a possibility. Mm. All right. So uh, right now I'm dealing with a lot of possibilities and a lot of guesses that are probably going to go nowhere. I mean, it, it is uh, turning the night, and uh, uh, it feels like uh, what was it? It feels like uh, we're about to like hit maybe the dawn of the next day, and I, I guess maybe that's because like uh, most murder murder mysteries, it feels like uh, after the first night, that's when uh, stuff starts happening. The cause of her headaches, Noir. What stress, more or less. Yeah. If you have too much stress in your system and you're not properly expressing your emotions, it can build up to tension headaches. Boy, I know that feel. Yep. yep. It's so. also something that a lot of college... Oh, yeah, definitely right, Crimson. It can also lead to lower back pain. It can also lead to intestinal distress, sinus problems, ulcers... Found out most of that in college. Thank mm. you, psychopharmacology. Alright, so is that pretty much uh, all you have, or do you still add some more? No, I believe that's just about it. Alright, okay, so uh, anyone else have anything? Okay, yeah, oh, wait, questions? there was one other thing. Okay. Was that really the first time that Jessica has seen Natsuhi, her own mom, with that bad of a headache? Perhaps. I don't know. I mean, they don't state when uh, Natsuhi got the headaches, do they? No, it really doesn't. So maybe it's a recent thing because of the family conference. Mm. Uh, maybe maybe that. this one specifically is stressful, more stressful than like previously. I remember she gets some all every time the family conference like comes around, and like I know this that. time, yeah. and because this time they're like going in on the inheritance super hard, she got yeah. even more stressful. Yeah. And plus, finding out that like your like uh, your husband has been lying to you the whole time. Oh, it's exactly that'll gonna be help. worse. And seeing okay, you yeah. more as a trophy wife, that's kind of bad. What do you mean? There, there's no talk of that. 
is implying. No, there wasn't any implying, was it? Wait, implying what? They're playing Crossfuse Natsui as a trophy wife. What do you mean? When did that ever get brought up? Yeah. What do you mean by trophy wife? Do you not know what trophy he wife is? He doesn't see her as an equal value member of, of the family. He sees her nothing more as just a part of a lower being than him. Wait, what do you mean? That doesn't mean trophy wife. That's a, just a... I guess it's just sexism. <laughs> A trophy wife is just, is somebody and like sexism. A Adding you, that in as well. That you have is like a is like a way to make yourself look better. Yeah. And I mean, I haven't. I mean, yeah, he probably doesn't view her as an equal, but I also never got the trophy wife feeling from her. Yeah. Like I mean, like I mean, like she's fine as fuck, but like I don't. I mean, think she's granted, actually, uh, she doesn't really seem to be like harbor animosity toward him except for this time. So I mean, they might have gotten along well for a while. Hmm, might yeah. have. Or it was arranged. Because she said she didn't have any choice when she did marry him. Did she say that? Yeah, kind of. Yeah. Uh, I don't even remember that. Well, if that's... Oh, my uh, memory bad. If that is the end, um, I guess uh, this is the yep, final wrap-up. that's up. all I had to ask. And uh, before we leave, before we leave and end the stream, I would like to burn this onto everyone's memory. Hmm. <laughs> God damn it, Dan! Damn it, man! Why? Dan? He likes oh, man, the last dress. Oh, God. It's, it's, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. bad. If it makes you feel any better... His head is too big for the body! If it makes you feel any better, there's one that exists of a, a Nanjo over Beatrice's body. <laughs> and that's oh, just wait, unrelated. I didn't wait. even make that. LaRouche? <laughs> the Beatrice? Is that Angus? <laughs> No, I prefer the Beatrice Aegis over this! Yes! LaRouche, as a resident guy that likes guys, I'm pretty sure, uh, what, how do you feel about that? Wow, Bone. Wow. wow. Wait, and, I am right, right, wait, he does like guys, right? I'm not wrong, right? What? My, what? My, what? My, what? I totally- What the fuck are you talking about, Bone? Yeah, uh, 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 now seems like a great time to wrap up this- <laughs> yes, yes it is. Uh, yeah. hold up a second. Noir is asking Joshi to say, it makes me feel pretty in Genji's voice for the dress. It makes me feel pretty. <laughs> 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 Alright. Um, <coughs> for the people who did show up, I don't know if anybody actually did, but whatever. Thank you very much for coming. Uh, we'll see you all <laughs> next time. I'm, I think Friday. Uh, have a good night. See you later. <laughs> please, please follow me on Twitter and Twitch. Uh...